It is your PrisonPlanet.tv memberships that fund so much of what we do here in this operation. And then we're more than happy for the TV show after it's aired live, then be leaked out onto the web to tens of millions of people. That's our goal. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us on this Thursday, May 2nd, 2013, Worldwide uh, Edition. I am your host, Alex Jones. We're going to be live here for the next three hours and riding shotgun with me. Uh, their admission control in Austin, Texas will be Jakari Jackson. Now, I have a ton of news that obviously I'm going to be uh, getting to uh, here today. We're going to look at uh, some of the uh, dorm mates now are the new terror threat uh, and the masterminds, the FBI. Okay, we seem to be having a little bit of technical difficulties. We'll get reconnected with Alex and get you right back to him in one second. But I'll go ahead and start off with a few things we have coming up on our show today. This is out of Breitbart. Pentagon may court martial soldiers who share Christian faith. Now, this is just days or weeks after we saw uh, Lieutenant Colonel Jack Rich come out with an email to his subordinates saying the new terror threat are Christians as well as many other groups, but he also mentioned people of Christian faith. And this article goes on to say the Pentagon has released a statement confirming that soldiers could be prosecuted for promoting their faith. And then the Pentagon issued a, uh, a comment to the Jack Rich email and it said that the Pentagon does not discriminate to anybody, discriminate against any group based on faith. And then I had to ask the question, well, what have they been doing to Muslims since forever? And that's just one of the articles we have coming up. Next, we have police, police say liberal student activist threatened herself with rape in Facebook host, host hoax to uh, frame conservatives. And then we also have this one, lesbian who reported hate crime attack staged incident, Nebraska police say. And that's just some of the things we have coming up for you on the show today. I'm pretty sure Alex has many things he wants to mention as well. Let's take a look at a few more here. High school student faces 20 years for Obama Facebook threat. Now, this is after, you guys remember last, uh, the last election cycle, we had all those threats to Mitt Romney. Regardless if you like Mitt Romney or not, I'm not a cheerleader for Mitt. But he had many threats uh, from people on Twitter, Facebook, and other places saying, hey, I want to kill Mitt Romney. If Mitt Romney wins, I'm going to run him over, shoot him up. We saw that Michael Moore funded video where the old lady said she's going to punch him in the gonads and all that was well and good. But this guy, a uh, guy with a little too much time on his hands and middle fingers, I don't, I don't even know if we can show that. But uh, this guy says he wants to kill people and now he's facing 20 years. So that's, that's how the system works. Let's go to this next one. Floridans encouraged to report neighbors who, quote, hate the government. Now, there's a difference between hating your government and being critical of it. We are very critical of it here at InfoWars. But people seem to equate that with hating your government and some type of violent extremist activity. Let's go to this one. IRS to spy on our shopping records, travels, travel and social interactions. Now, Mrs. Uh, Catherine Albrick, or should I say doctor, she's been warning about this for years. Uh, the frequent shopper cards, uh, many other kinds of perks and benefits that you can get from giving people your special information, secret information. And now they're saying that they're going to spy on you. They just admit it. Throw it in your face. Yes, this is what we are going to do. But, you know, you're a conspiracy theorist. If you point out the data mining centers and all these other cookie things that they do to collect your information, Google, Bing, Yahoo, many other sources. So that's what they're going to do. And that's what they admit to doing. Now, last night on the InfoWars Nightly News, I had David Knight on. And this is something very important because we get a lot of comments about this referring to the Paul Revere contest. I just want everybody to know that the Paul Revere contest is over. We have not selected a winner. We'll probably do that around July 4th. So definitely be encouraged. If you did submit, just be aware it's going to take us a little bit to get through all those entries. And we'll ho hopefully have Alex Jones back on the other side. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on this Thursday Worldwide Edition. Again, I'm coming to you from the road, and Jakari Jackson is riding shotgun there. 
at the InfoWars uh, Center in Austin, Texas. We've got a ton of important news uh, and information that we're going to be going over uh, and covering uh, in detail today. Remember this story uh, from back in 2002? Since then, it's, it's morphed quite a bit towards the... Uh, towards the Stasi state. Is your cable guy a spy uh, was the question. And then it goes into the new TIPS program uh, with the Citizen Corps. Isn't that nice? Being, being part of the Citizen Corps, of course, I've seen all these mainstream news articles saying there is no Citizen Corps, there is no FEMA Corps. Uh, I am reportedly, uh, I am reportedly, um, you know, making all of that up. Uh, and then we have uh, other, other reports uh, here coming out today uh, that are up on uh, InfoWars.com uh, dealing with a sheriff in Florida saying if somebody says they hate the government, well, then just call us and we'll send uh, some psychiatric uh, forces uh, over there to uh, deal with them. And, of course, this is the new Soviet-style uh, system uh, in America uh, where uh, you see a repeat of what we saw in Nazi Germany, Soviet Russia, uh, and so many other authoritarian systems where outside of law, uh, the psychiatric system uh, basically uh, comes in uh, and takes over the society. Uh, and again, we've got Jakari Jackson uh, there riding shotgun uh, with us today, breaking a lot of this down. He's going to have some other news reports here for us. And I have the Master Sergeant David Schmecker, uh, joining us coming up at the bottom of the next hour, arrested for walking around uh, in, in rural areas outside Waco, Texas, with his rifle, with his son. And the cops said, we don't care what the law is, we're going to arrest you. So we're supposed to feel good when the government has guns everywhere and are wearing black uniforms and, and telling neighbors to spy on us, but you don't go outside with your gun, even in rural areas in Texas, or we'll, we'll take your gun and then charge you with resisting arrest, even though there's video uh, that, your, that his son shot showing that that's not the case. Because uh, why not? Uh, uh, again, uh, here's the headline up on InfoWars.com. It says, Floridians encouraged to report neighbors who hate the government. One million dollar hotline characterizes dissent as extremist threat. A new one million dollar program led by Palm Beach County Sheriff Rick Bradshaw aimed at violence prevention. How about preventing the globalists that run our country from murdering millions of people worldwide, uh, is encouraging Floridians uh, to report their neighbors for making hateful comments about the government, a chilling reminder of how dissent is being characterized as extremist threat. Bradshaw plans to use the extra million dollars to write some more tickets there, pal, pay the cops 100000 apiece, to launch prevention intervention units. Don't run, we are your friends. This is not an assault. More Tokyo Rose stuff. Prevention uh, intervention units featuring specially trained deputies, mental health professionals, and caseworkers. The teams will respond to citizen phone calls to a 24-hour hotline. <laughs> hey, East Germany had it. It's got to be good here. Uh, but when we do it, it's good, of course. Let's make some more excuses for it. Everything will be fine. Uh, with a knock on the door and a referral to the services, that's adult CPS, basically, to kidnap you. Indeed, uh, it goes on, reports the Palm Beach Post. Bradshaw makes it clear that the kind of behavior which could uh, prompt a visit from the authorities, not the servants, but the authorities, includes anti-government political statements that may be deemed a prelude to violent action. So it's not just a threat now, it's a prelude to it. Uh, we want people to call us if the guy down the street says he hates the government, comma, hates the mayor. See, now hating the government means this next statement, hates the mayor and he's going to shoot him. Well, obviously, if someone says we're going to shoot the mayor, you need to, if they're serious, call the police. But see, no, 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 now it's if you hate the government. I can't tell you how many people have been visited by the Secret Service if they just say they hate Obama or Obama's a piece of garbage. Secret Service shows up and demands people be fired. In fact, somebody's sitting there right now, their dad runs a car dealership, and the Secret Service came and said, your head mechanic said a little something that he didn't like Obama. We want him fired. And, of course, in America, people then follow their orders because they're so scared of the government. Uh, but uh, we, want to, uh, we want people to call us if the guy down the street says he hates the government, hates the mayor, and he's going to shoot him. Bradshaw said, 
What does it hurt to have somebody knock on a door and ask, hey, is everything all right? No, they're going to SWAT team you and maybe get another notch on their belt because most of these SWAT team guys like to hunt humans. That's what's going to happen. A SWAT team is going to pull up with a robot and they're going to hope that, you, you know, that they get to come in and kill you. Or maybe burn your house down. Maybe, maybe they can have them dance around the house and say, we're going to burn it down on the radio. We're going to burn the mother effer down and then burn it down on video. And the, and the media will say, well, they didn't mean burn it down. They just said burn it down, burn that house down, burn that mother effer down. So that's the type of garbage uh, that we're dealing with here. And, and again, this is the Soviet rollout with Homeland Security funding everywhere. I mean, you can type in your cable guy is spying on you, the phone repair person is spying on you. I mean, now whenever you've got any of these repair people in your office, unless you know them and they're patriots, you better believe they now are, are, are uppity secret agents of the New World Order. See all the CIA ads on TV, you know, just recruiting people? And they're there just recruiting under AmeriCorps and SecureCorps and all these groups, just armies of clergy response team and InfraGuard and just everyone there. This is the new economy. The new economy is going to be disappearing us in the labyrinths of the most imprisoned population in the world. You thought the drug war was a fraud? Now it's going to be the secret police war on liberty lovers, and it will actually create the war. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy to create that actual war. That is the program, that is the plan, that is what they're coming up with. And it goes on, the uh, program will also include public service announcements. This is a quote, this is not us, this is from the news, with a straight face. The public service announcements to encourage local citizens to report their neighbors, reports the newspaper. The program has sparked concern that the hotline could violate civil liberties. <laughs> what, that, uh, that, that conspiracy theory, the ebony rights? or even be exploited to pursue personal vendettas. Oh, that never happens. With Bradshaw's acknowledgement that anyone in a messy divorce or in a dispute with a neighbor could abuse the hotline, and that would prompt frivolous complaints. I mean, they already take your guns just if you're, you're in a divorce period. It's just, it's just done out of hand. Because everybody knows men are bad, but discriminating against men is no big deal. I mean, men are bad. We're, we're evil. And there's enough bis bisphenol A in the, in, the, in the plastics to make sure that doesn't happen. Your sperm counts down by 80 plus percent. You know, just enjoy it. Uh, the caveat is all more chilling given the research of Florida State University's Robert Galetti into how Germans under Hitler, well, it's a conspiracy theory that was any authoritarianism, because authoritarianism is, uh, doesn't exist, uh, denounced their neighbors and friends in Nazi Germany not because they genuinely believed them, to be a security threat, but because they expected to selfishly benefit from doing so, both financially, socially, and psychologically, via a Pavlovian need to be rewarded by their masters for their obedience. And yes, that is the essence of tyrannies throughout history, is a groveling worship of government and the thrill. That, 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 that's why when somebody calls the cops on their neighbor for putting a rifle in the back of their car in Alabama even, the SWAT team comes. And then they go ahead and arrest him and take his guns and just say, well, we took him in for an evaluation because they've got to teach the public the only power you have is through the God state. The only power you have is through worshiping the government. The only power you have, there is no individual. There is only the worship of black uniforms, the worship of black helicopters, the worship of open borders, the worship of checkpoints, the worship of CPS taking your kids, the worship of brain damage and autism off the charts, the worship of GMOs sterilizing rats fed to you and your family, the worship of scores of GMO crops that, that have their own pesticide in them that kills the bugs that eat it, but it's safe for you to eat. If you don't like it, you're a conspiracy theorist. That is all there is, is the total worship of the state. And the standard Stanford Research Institute studies where they found over 90% of people were ready to kill and they were ordered to by their superiors. Well, that is the priest of power. That is the new God. And you're a heretic, evil demon who will be rounded up and arrested if you don't worship the state. And you can all have power now if you just join the state. Join with the mega state. Join with it. Decide it's good. Love Big Brother. Go to the Chestnut Cafe and cry. Cry as Big Brother defeats another enemy. Cry as Big Brother destroys Assad with our ally Al-Qaeda, who's always been our friend and never been our enemy.
And if you remember them saying Al-Qaeda was our enemy, you're a conspiracy theorist. And God knows you need to be reported, arrested, and tortured like Winston immediately. Because let me tell you, 1984 is not a dystopic novel. It is a dream, a vision of the future, of a utopia world of trampling and being trampled upon. That is what it is. And none of you individuals will ever survive. None of you will ever defeat it. The system will crush you. It will destroy you. It will tear you apart. It will stomp on your face forever because government delivers heaven. Government declare, totally delivers Valhalla. And anyone that doesn't like their neighbors spying on them and when people are in your office waddling around spying on you and asking what's this, what's that. When you go rent a car, they ask you 20 questions and put it in a Homeland Security database. When you go have a baby, they ask you 20 questions hoping they could kidnap your child. All of it's for your own good. The, injecting black men with syphilis and watching them die over 50 years was for the children. All of it's for the children. The UN injecting millions of people in Africa and Latin America and Asia with tetanus shots that make them have abortions at the beginning of the second trimester, miscarriages, and also tends to kill the women. It's a gift of the state. It's a loving sacrament of everything good. And the state loves you, and the state is your God, and the state is going to take care of you and your family forever. Worship them. All there is is government. That's all there is in the universe, and you individuals will be trampled and run over forever in the beautiful religious orgy of death and destruction that is the all state and pressing on the nerve of power do you understand Winston You're never gonna end we'll be right back stay with us you slave individuals all right folks Alex Jones here back live ranting a little bit it's because I'm so sick of the incremental expansion of authoritarianism and control freak systems where people build their lives through government and corporations that control the government instead of developing anything of use and then they lecture us all day how we've got to worship them. It's a cult of government and insider corporate uh, minions that I just refuse to bow down and worship. And then I look at this creepy uh, sheriff, you know, just social worker, commissar sheriff, uh, Rick Bradshaw. And I, I look at this guy, and he's just sitting there you know, telling us how great it is that well, we're just going to drop by and, you know, talk to the person, see how they're doing, not off of a sworn affidavit, not off of someone going in and filling out a criminal complaint where if they're lying, they go to jail. No, just call the tip line and give us excuses to SWAT team whoever we want. And, of course, they do that. Uh, people constantly SWAT politicians and they SWAT bureaucrats and people with their own SWAT teams by calling in fake reports on them, <laughs> it's pretty ridiculous. Uh, but the, the, you know, this is a this is a hungry police state, the biggest the world's ever seen. But it's here for our own good, of course. Uh, and it goes on as uh, the professor points out. The program is also uh, has disturbing throwbacks to how political dissidents were imprisoned in Soviet mental hospitals, uh, where criticism of the state was deemed philosophical intoxication. Hey, but by the way, uh, sounds like an idiocracy where he gets uh, basically arrested because he knows how to talk. That's like a crime uh, there in the idiocracy world. That reminds me of um, what we see happening in this country where, again, we have a government that's still torturing. But, but, but again, it's okay when our government tortures. It's loving. It's caring. It's for a good cause. And it's okay that we have spies spying on everybody and filling out false reports constantly. Um, it goes on. Under Stalin, who nowadays I think should be known as a good guy, I mean, our government's adopting his policies, dissidents were sent to uh, infamous psychiatric prisons where they were isolated and brainwashed in order to have their political ideas discredited amongst the general public. Yeah. And, and, and now they just do that for trial when they stage a mass shooting they just electroshock you and drug you up and you, you know, it doesn't matter if you're openly under air force psychiatric control in a darpa mind control program it's just like, oh well, that's alex I, oh or, or if i told you the unabomber like i told the reporter that's here from esquire that the unabomber was in the mk ultra program he just looked at me like i was completely full of crap excuse my french because you know after all the the uh underwear bomber and the uh, Unabomber and all these other guys, sure, they were protected and shepherded by the government. Sure, they had government connections, but that's no big deal. There he is over there. I tried to get this Esquire reporter on the show, and he said his editor wouldn't let him. 
And by the way, uh, I didn't even know when I got this guy uh, here to town uh, to talk to us uh, that to, he came to Austin. I forgot I wasn't going to be in Austin, so he was nice enough to fly up here to Arkansas, where I'm at. And um, he, uh, he was like, so, you know, I'm with the CIA, or my dad was. And I said, no. And he goes, well, I would have expected you to have known that, because I wrote a book about my dad who was involved in overthrowing governments, but he didn't like it. Uh, so uh, he's been here trying to deprogram me, uh, you know, to where I will accept that Obama loves me and cares about me, and that the drone program is um, is well a lesser a lesser of evils. Is that right, John? <laughs> no comment. <laughs> oh boy. So we're going to come back with Jakari Jackson with a bunch of news he's got. We have several uh, Leanne McAdoo uh, reports that we're going to be. Uh, going over here as well, uh, and I am going to uh, open the phones up uh, so that you can also get involved on air with us. There's a lot of other news I haven't even gotten to yet today. 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231, and we will get you up and on the air. Open lines for whoever wants to call in on whatever issue you wish to uh, raise. So that is, that is just some uh, of the uh, points uh, that we're going to be uh, going over today. And I was just told about this about an hour ago, and uh, here's this article from Salon. It says, Alex Jones Conspiracy Inc. Conspiracy theories can be big business. Here's how the multi-platform entrepreneur makes his millions. And just a classic way to deceive uh, their readers as usual, or maybe they're just ignorant. We'll be right back. Stay with us uh, on the other side. All right, you know this broadcast is not really gone so most of the time, except when we get our rights or liberties violated. Like a few months ago when the police tried to say we couldn't hand out InfoWars magazines uh, in Austin, Texas. Uh, that then, you know, became part of the story. Uh, we became part of the story because the establishment was trying to violate our rights. But the fact that we've got, I mean, no exaggeration, I don't know, 10, 15 news articles a day the last few months, uh, most days demonizing us, is really an example of how the power structure uh, is getting more and more desperate. And why are they doing that? Well, you could argue that they think Alex Jones is a good way to smear the liberty movement. Richard, do me a favor. Will you turn my headphones up over there? Thank you. Because uh, after you made that adjustment, I can't even really hear audio. Thanks. I, I want to be able to hear Jakar when we go to him in a moment. Uh, thank you. Uh, so what's going on here is uh, Piers Morgan's ratings have dropped to an all-time low again. I'm going to go over some of those numbers. All of the mainstream cable uh, is a shadow of what it just was five years ago. And it is only intensifying it is only increasing and so they look out there across the landscape for something to attack something to go after and i guess my head here in the whack-a-mole game is sticking up higher than some other people's and so they're going after us because they're scared to death that people will actually research what we're covering so they're not going after us predominantly uh, because they think i'm a kook and, and a easy target they're they're going because if that was the case, they would have me on more radio programs, more of their TV programs. No, no. They are going after us because we are becoming more and more effective. And so it's important for listeners uh, to realize that and to promote the broadcast and to tell their friends and family and to financially support us because Salon and others are uh, going with the classic tactic. I mean, you've got mainstream media funded by big money sponsors. Uh, I notice they're funded by Wells Fargo here as I look at the Salon article. That's the big bank caught laundering $378 billion of drug money and running the narcotics aircraft a few years ago. That was in Associated Press and even Bloomberg. Uh, but here they are, because, see, I'm bad because I'm not laundering drug money. Uh, I'm bad because I sell high-quality vitamins and minerals and have firearm sponsors and have high-quality storable foods so people can be self-sufficient uh, in this inflationary system the globalists have created. They want us dependent. They want us on food stamps. No, we're going to be dependent on ourselves. So they write an article, Alex Jones Conspiracy, Inc., and it goes on to say conspiracy theories can be big business. 
Uh, that means questioning known dying media, known liars, known corrupt power structure that told us there were WMDs in Iraq. Uh, knowingly, the memos came out. It was on purpose. Conspiracy theories can be big business. That's right. If we build our own platform and become successful, that's bad. Here's how the multi-platform entrepreneur makes his millions. His millions. Now, it would be okay if I was making millions of dollars and keeping it. But uh, did, did, did Salon call us to try to find out? Uh, how much money we actually make. Well, here it is. It's good to be Alex Jones. Matt Drudge, the conservative web entrepreneur and news aggregator, provided prolific uh, or, or prophetic when he predicted in 2013 would be the year of Alex Jones. The longtime conspiracy broadcaster is finally breaking into the mainstream consciousness after a buzzy interview with Piers Morgan and his Boston bombing conspiracy. And traffic to his websites has never been higher. The conspiracy business is booming. So is the CNN's business booming when the bombing happened? Or is Salon's booming when they sit there and talk about me all day so they make money, knowing I'm a hot topic? Oh, no. And make no mistake, it's a business. That's not to say Jones isn't a believer. There are easier ways to make money. But Jones has built a multi-platform new media empire in his Austin, Texas free speech systems and reaches millions of believers and promises and advertisers that it will direct lucrative buyers to you from a daily audience of active enthusiasts. Yeah, that's what the sales guys wrote. Uh, they, I, I ought to actually write my bio on the things on the website. Uh, and... All told, Jones is very likely raking in millions. Yeah, about seven million a year. That's right. And about six plus of that goes into the operation. Some of the other stuff we put into funds to then build larger projects and things. I mean, I, that's what I'm into. Uh, Jones didn't invent the business model, but he may have perfected it. He comes from a long line of what historian Greg or Robert Goldberg calls conspiracy entrepreneurs. And then it goes on uh, from there uh, to basically say that anybody that challenges the government is just basically a profiteer person. So, see, it's not good from nowhere with literally no money from my family. Um, my dad did help me set up a computer program to take orders online uh, and things like that in about 1996. And, you know, 1996, and he did help me set up a 1-800 number because I wasn't good at that. So my dad did help me a little bit. But other than that, I 100% I, I on my own built Infowars.com. And in the new America, that's not a good thing. If you're a defense contractor getting hundreds of billions of dollars a year, you know, to build drones and weapon systems to bomb villages, that's a good thing. USA, USA, USA. If you're a vaccine maker dumping deadly Gardasil shots known to kill people on the trials that doesn't even protect you from papillomavirus, their own insert states, on the public and having Rick Perry lie and say it's the law uh, that you've got to take the shot so they could run the hoax and make millions of people take it, that's a good thing. If you're MSNBC that gets stimulus money to give Rachel Maddow raises, uh, that's a good thing. Uh, if you're General Electric, you know, connected to the media uh, with all its defense contracting and stuff, and uh, so, so, so you can pay your news division even when it loses money to propagandize, that's a good thing. But when you as an individual in the free market of ideas from nowhere build your own media operation because you want to restore the republic, that is the nastiest, dirtiest thing in the entire whole wide world, ladies and gentlemen. And again, the reason that we are under such unmitigated <coughs> uh, attack is because we are effective. We are effective. And, and when I ran into Piers Morgan's uh, producer, well, I was told where he was going to be at by the gun range uh, in Houston. So they said, come down here. As long as you're polite, you can come in the back room and confront him. As long as you're not rude. People said, well, why were you nice? Because I told the guy to be nice. And I went in and shook Piers Morgan's hand and said, why don't you have me on again? And he said, and this is on video, because we don't want to give you that much attention. But I thought if you kicked my butt, if it was this big victory, why wouldn't you then want to have me back on if it was such a rout? The truth is it was an implosion in the hypnosis. It was an implosion in the trance people are in. So you see somebody go, look, knock it off. You want to confiscate our guns, and you know it. 
So stop sitting there and acting like you don't when you've been on record saying people shouldn't have guns and when Bloomberg's been on record saying ban all the guns and when Obama as a state senator said he didn't believe in the individual right to own guns and the attorney general when he was deputy attorney general said the same thing and Sarah Brady has said the same thing. Stop sitting here talking to us like we're idiots, con man. Stop sitting here telling me you just want reasonable restrictions because that's not what you want. You want to register to then confiscate, like mayors against gun violence propagandist Mike Martinez in Austin, Texas, Mayor Pro Tem said. He said, hey, you see that sign out there saying don't ban our guns? We're not going to do that today. But what we are going to do now is the first step to making your sign a reality. So keep that sign, you're going to need it. And the whole crowd laughs. <laughs> <laughs> we know the plan. We know the best thing in society. We're going to get these guys incrementally. Well, they armed to the teeth against us. And I want to go to a David Knight piece and then come back with Jakari Jackson to get his take on this and so much more. But you have heard me in recent times spend a lot more time about you know, what's happening to Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. Because the system is going to pick apart what we say. They're going to twist what we say. They're going to take it out of context. And they are going to try to demonize us. Just like when they said, Alex Jones says the government wants to make you gay with juice, juice boxes for kids. The whole ranch showed a bunch of news articles where the frogs are becoming sterile or having both sexual organs or hermaphrodites. The fish are from the runoff of what's going on in our society. And I've got government documents like the White House Science Czar's own writings and Ecoscience and others about doing that to us and countless other scientists. So I know it's on purpose. I talked to chemists. They had hundreds of other plastics just as cheap they could have used that didn't have estrogen mimickers in it. And that's part of their program. They're now proposing putting lithium in the water. They're now proposing putting men on estrogens to make us not aggressive. This is engineering. And this is mainline systems pushing this. This is the conditioning. This is the program. They, they, they brag they use soap operas and cartoons in the third world and here domestically to go after the family and to remove the man as the head of the household and make the state the head of the household and the parents as babysitters. So. So we know all of this. We understand all of this. And then they just said it was an anti-gay rant saying that everyone who's gay is because of chemicals. Doesn't he know about the Romans? Yes, I know about the Romans. It's not a judgment of gay people. It's not a judgment of fish. I'm not obsessed with fish being gay. The point is we're chemically being manipulated and confused from what we were naturally born to be because in their own documents that we cover in Endgame 2.0, they break down how they plan to do this to break up the family. Just like Brave New World talked about making people sexless and making them go into fertility early. And, 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 and this is what Bertrand Russell wrote about. Diet injections and junctions to turn us into adult sheep. And that's what I'm frustrated by is that is that we are under con under massive scientific manipulation. I don't like being under social engineering. The social engineers admit they're doing it. So much of the media is paid government propaganda and foreign government propaganda, and it's the opposite of a free society. Whatever is the real popular driving force in culture should be, in the free market of ideas, the dominant system and the example, and that builds renaissance. That will take us to the stars, not what they're establishing. Now, here's David Knight in a four-minute report breaking down the unprecedented... Uh, propaganda dealing with the bullets. Yes, they bought billions of bullets, and yes, it's for us. Here it is. You've got even neocons fessing up to what Infowars has made the public aware of, and former governor of Alaska Sarah Palin has warned that the federal government is stockpiling bullets in preparation for civil unrest, adding that America is finished if it cannot deal with its debt problems. She wrote that on her Facebook page. And uh, you know now you ha have neocons from Mark Levin, Michael Savage, now Sarah Palin, admitting that uh, the federal government is arming itself to the teeth. And the only people who don't know about that now, uh, or who act like they don't know this is going on, is the federal government. Now you've got neocon Sarah Palin talking about this. For more on this issue, we go to our very own David Knight. So David Knight, tell us a little bit about your thoughts on this issue. 
Well, the media has gone into full damage control with this after Sarah Palin came out with it. Uh, you've got uh, Politico, you've got Atlantic Wire, you've got uh, Huffington Post. You've got everybody basically saying these are debunked conspiracy theories. And uh, they're not debunked. We're not making this up. As a matter of fact, it was uh, Politico that even linked uh, Sarah Palin to Alex Jones. You know, and so she joins Alex Jones in InfoWars and looking at this. Uh, I've got a graph here that basically shows how in the last 10 months uh, the DHS has ramped this up. And Watson pulled these figures from FedBiz and uh, from uh, a couple of different sites here that are FedBid and uh, Federal Business Opportunities. This one right here is uh, actually a publication of the GSA. This is uh, the main source for contractors to get information about what the federal government is buying. So this is public information. This is coming from the Fed's site. So there's no dispute that they're putting out bids to get these things. The question is, why are they buying so much ammunition? Well, the media has tried to explain that away by with a couple of attempts. First, they came back and they said, well, uh, they only last summer they said they started talking about the smallest purchases. They talked about 174,000 from Social Security Administration. They talked about 46,000 from the Weather Service, from NOAA. And they tried to explain it away and say, this is just for practice. This is for target practice. But we're not talking about a few hundred thousand. We're talking about hundreds of millions of purchases. And when the very first one of these came out at 200 million, people were saying, why are they buying so much ammunition? But they quickly doubled down on that and bought 450 more million just a couple of months after that. And then a couple of months after that, they got another 750 million. Then another month after that, they got another 200 million. I mean, they were just ramping up on this. It's about war. Like if these bullets were all, first of all, talk about hollow points very quickly. Right, right. And talk about war. How let's just say this was all used for war. How Good long point. would that be for? Good point. You know, when they're talking about it being for target practice uh, and uh, talking about saving money, hollow points are very expensive. You don't use those for target practice. So it's ludicrous from that standpoint. If you know anything about firearms, you know that they're not going to buy hollow points for firearms practice. But if you look back at the uh, amount of ammunition that was being used at the peak of the Iraq war, that was five and a half million rounds a month. Okay, So you're still looking at the quantities that they bought that would be about 24 to 30 years worth of ammunition if they're fighting a war the size of the Iraq war. I think they want to basically starve the marketplace of ammunition. Because if you've got guns and no ammunition, it's like having a car with no gas. Okay, it's pretty. And, and one thing that they can do is they can essentially suck all the uh, oxygen out of the marketplace, suck all the ammunition out of the marketplace with these gigantic purchases. Uh, but we found out just a couple of months ago, people going through and looking at the uh, recycling documents coming out of Fort Drum in New York, found that they are not selling their once used brass, but they're turning it, they're spending extra money to turn it into brass scrap and selling it to the Chinese as scrap metal instead of selling it back into the United States market uh, as once used brass, which would help to uh, keep the price of ammunition down. All right, David, thank you so much for that analysis. Thank you, David. All right, so there is that report from like a month ago dealing with it, and, and, and now there's even more purchases of the bullets. And remember, they told you that they weren't purchasing any bullets and we were liars. And they said, okay, we are getting them, but they're not for you and hollow point bullets are for target practice, while you just see a total training going on everywhere to take on the American people, setting up classic spy networks, you name it, and they've always got these ridiculous coverage for why they're doing it. This is 21st century propaganda, where to the general mass, they'll have an effeminate police chief up there in a non-threatening way, going, we just want to be your friend. We're here to be your friend. You know, we've come to your planet in peace. Uh, you know, here, just, 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 you know, just take these shots and give us your guns and give us your kids and do what we say. We want to make the world better for you. Golly gee, we promise. And of course, I use the analogy of space aliens, body snatchers, you know, as a joke before the New York Times or somebody you know, says, I'm serious about that. But they might as well be aliens from a foreign planet. I mean, it's just a culture of people that buy in to being conned by this system. And the system is getting more and more and more and more out of control. And, you know, the biggest thing hurting us is the television. The mainline television there, dumbing everybody down. A nation of spectators, the average adult watches something like five hours a day. The average young person, eight hours of TV and video games. And it's just a nation, of a world more and more of people that just can't differentiate reality from fiction.
And so they can't even recognize classical flaming tyranny when it's stomping down the middle of the street towards them. We'll be right back with Jakari Jackson, your phone calls. And what most people do when they go into a tyranny is they make excuses for it. They rationalize it because deep down they have mass Stockholm syndrome and are afraid of the system. So they make the decision to cozy up to it as a defense mechanism, believing it will protect them. And this will not protect you from this cold-blooded, disconnected corporate Borg that is taking over society. And the fact that we've gotten away from real American values is why we are now going to go into bondage. And they will just label bondage as uh, a, a, a wonderful new thing and will label liberty as a thought crime. And that is where we stand right now here in this constitutional republic. Uh, don't forget that you can go to InfoWarsStore.com and uh, take some of the steps in being self-sufficient, getting healthy, quality, organic, non-GMO, open-pollinated, non-hybrid seeds. We have a giant selection of the lowest prices out there. And when you also purchase from us, it also supports the transmission and makes a lot of people mad that there's still enough money in this country uh, to fund independent thought and independent resistance, unapologetic resistance. We've also got the ProPure water filtration systems, discounted 10% off with promo code WATER, and you can get 11 memberships with the same username passcode with one master membership for $5.95 a month at prisonplanet.tv to see the daily radio show and to see the nightly news, 7 o'clock central. Uh, some of the uh, videos up on Infowars.com. Uh, poll, overwhelming majority oppose California gun confiscation. New Kurt Nemo article, MSNBC, guest who attacked InfoWars Exposed. And man, I got to tell you, it's like a 30-minute uh, interview Rob Dude did with the guy that went up and got in Dan Badani's face said, how dare you ask questions, how dare you say the government may have been involved. He then went on to say that we said that no one was even bombed at the bombing. When that's other people saying it's crisis actors, which they do have for drills and things. Uh, you know, where they do these the, 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 you know, mass shooting drills. It's not us saying that. Uh, we've interviewed a professor that's saying he believes that's what's going on from Florida. And, and he just sat there with talking points attacking us. And maybe we'll air some of that in the third hour. It was so amazing. And, and, and then they put him on the news like he was a hero saying, you need to be shut up. You need to be shut up. You're mentally ill. Yeah, let's not ask the FBI, known for staging things over and over again, about drills they admittedly had that day. And then I said, they'll probably end up being cased by the FBI and basically protected. And then now that looks like where this whole thing is going. But regardless of what's behind it, you're going to have your liberties attacked. Here it is. Suspect's friends charged in case. UMass students alleged to have lied and removed evidence. They reportedly went into their dorm and removed the firecracker uh, evidence where they got the black powder. Oh, got to ban the fireworks now. Because uh, somebody might blow somebody up with it. Got to ban cars now because somebody might run somebody over with a car. By the way, they're working on that, making it where every, you know, the computer drives. And if you make a move that's not proper, the computer takes over. Skynet is in control for your safety. Uh, and again, the big story up at Infowars.com. Floridians encourage to report neighbors who hate the government. IRS to spy on your shopping records, travel, and social interactions. Yeah. I mean, now the government just basically gets into your bank accounts, everything without warrants. But, I mean, who needs those? That's that, that's that fascist thing called the Bill of Rights. We need to get rid of that pronto. And don't worry, they are. And we need to be like Europe, which they're now moving to do, and then just take your bank accounts. Just take your money. It's a good thing to prop up the big mega banks. That's a good thing happening in Europe. Don't be extreme. Uh, IRS to spy on your shopping records. Isn't that nice? Fewer Americans willing to give up their liberty to fight terrorism in a new poll. Well... That just shows the disease of liberty is spreading. Those filthy Americans will break their will, though. We'll collectivize them. All right, coming up in the next segment, I am going to start going to your phone calls at 800-259-9231. And we will get into a lot of the other uh, top stories uh, that are unfolding. Of course, the war drums uh, are beating even louder for uh, love bombs, humanitarian peace bombs, peace prize bombs. Maybe they put, like, pink little roses on the bombs they drop on Syria. Like they did Libya, it'll make it okay. And uh, you know, or maybe when al-Qaeda cuts the Christians' heads off and throws them off the buildings and our media won't cover it as our government injects al-Qaeda in, maybe if they, like, g gave the kids a little chocolate bar before they blow their heads off, it'd make it all right. Because that's what Joseph Mengele would do. 
Maybe that made it okay. Give them a chocolate bar and sit there and just with a luger shoot little kids in the head. But he was the state. He was the government. Maybe people, if they would have gone along and not fought Hitler, he would have made it better. I don't think that's the case. That's why I'm an extremist. I've studied history and know that 99% of the time, big governments create absolute nightmare hells. But see, that's why I'm the bad man. You can tell today I'm just being a little sarcastic uh, here with uh, the Esquire writer. I'm going to be honest. I'm a closet government worshiper. I mean, I love North Korea. I want to move there. Where the... Come on. Hey, J John Richardson. Hey, from Esquire. D are you a fan of Kim Jong-un? You're not going to be on the show? I think he's a rock star. I think he's devastatingly powerful. Let's just look at Kim Jong-un seething with real v vigorous power. Return the map. Return what you have stolen. Return the Constitution. Return the liberty. You're in great danger. All right, enough screwing around. Jakari Jackson, I'm going to take calls for 30 minutes and then go to you. I know you've got a big stack of news there. Tell me, tell me what's coming up today while you ride shotgun there. Well, we have a few new articles here, Alex. We have Apple avoids potential $9 billion tax bill. Let's see, we already covered that one. A couple more here. Physical by smartphone becoming a real possibility. Now, back when I was in high school and I had to take a physical, you had to do the, the turn and cough. Not being crude, that's just what it was. And... I'm not exactly sure how you're going to achieve such a thing with a smartphone and many other things. Now, I did mention this article a little bit earlier, and I want to go back to it if I can, Alex. High school student faces 20 years for Obama Facebook threat. He posted, I think he should. I think, I, no, I think, I think he should be sent to, sent to prison for life. You think they should throw him in Gitmo? Well, happens? That's what Gitmo's for. Yeah, just for guys. I, I'm sorry. Go ahead and get to your point. We're going to cover this more at the bottom of the hour. Go okay, ahead. okay. I just, I just want to read this quote. Uh, this is what he posted on his Facebook, F politics, F Obama, and F the government. A very uh, eloquent young man right there that you can see on your screen. And, yeah, by uh, the way, that's, that's protected by free speech to say F the government, F Obama. I'll say it, F Obama. Uh, not even I use those terms for people usually I have more eloquent uh, lexicon. But yeah, I should have covered this. You're right. This is the top story that he's now facing 20 years in jail for talking bad about Kim Jong-un. <laughs> yeah, Kim Jong-un, Obama. So that, that was just Kim Jong uh, Obama Un. Oh, and Alex, I don't know if if they told you we have the new magazine. This just came in. This is the one that has all the free bumper stickers in it. And I'll show I tell them. you what, Jakari, come back. Let's get into the flipping off first. Okay. And then I'll go to the callers. And I tell you, if I'm in a nasty mood today, folks, I really am. I'm going to be honest with people. People ask why I get so mad on air. I am sick of this, man. This is freaking me out. This is freaking me out. My wife, you know, part of her degree, uh, because she went to school in France, was a, 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 a semester in Holocaust history, the real thing. Like, she studied with the French underground and people like that, and she's always going, we got to get out of here. we got to get out of here. we got to get out of here. She studied and lived in Normandy, and she talked to the real French people that were in the resistance, you know, as part of that, and, you know, studied it. And she's like, I know Terry when I see it. Let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. That's something good for Esquire to know. And that's why this is really freaking me out. This guy faces 20 years in prison for saying F Obama. Well, you know what? I'm going to say it. F Obama to hell where he came from with his drones and his peace prize. All right, here's the deal. We're now into hour number two on this Thursday uh, edition. We are broadcasting worldwide. I want to thank all of you for joining us again uh, on this Thursday uh, edition. It is already the second day of May. 2013. And, and before I get to one of our top stories today that ties in with all the other news, high school student faces 20 years for Obama Facebook threat, and all he said was, F the government, F Obama. Now, again, I don't use a lot of profanity because I think there's better words to describe things. And I think if we obsess just over Obama, we actually give the globalist, you know, the upper hand because then when their system moves forward with a new puppet, you know, the next Republican or whatever, then it'll take a while to then expose that guy instead of exposing the people, the special interests that are doing this uh, and that are running over our rights and liberties and, 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 and trying to codify laws to override our laws, which is completely unconstitutional and, and, and you know, flies in the face of liberty. So we're going to get to that because, I mean, here's the deal. 
I, I think we've got a, a, a duty now to go to Facebook and to go to Twitter and everywhere else and say what this guy said. So we're going to get to that in a moment. But talk about free speech. They can censor us on Facebook, which they're doing at epidemic levels, when we send out photos of the drill, the bombing drill, the police with the backpacks, the military with the backpacks. The FBI freaked out and said, media, don't look at these at the press conferences. They had tried to have Secret Service outside their jurisdiction go and get in our reporter's face. There's video of all that. They're really clearly trying to cover something up. And we said they'd have a drill. They had a drill. We said the FBI and CIA would be all over these guys. They probably would have been sent as CIA, at least Tamerlan, to the caucuses under CIA programs because they run all the major terror in the caucuses. I mean, basically all of it. The, the Russians blew their cover. All of that came out because it wasn't hard to predict this. Most terrorists staged a provocateur to one extent or another. They at least opened the door up. And they used it to take our freedoms. We predicted that, and they freaked out. And, and, and Facebook, we have the screenshots of this, and our listeners sent us the screenshots, would not let us post articles linking to the Boston Globe about a drill. <clears throat> because they're so scared that if people find out about this, ladies and gentlemen, they're going to discover they knew about the whole thing, bare minimum. Just like the first World Trade Center bombing, where the government cooked the bomb, trained the driver, all the rest of it. So we're going to go to your calls uh, here in a moment. But I wanted to get, uh, you know, Jakari Jackson to show TV viewers, radio listeners, you can go check out. It's on InfoWarsStore.com. The new May issue of the magazine is in. It will guaranteed sell out. We sell them in groups of 10 up to 100 at cost. At cost. Or it comes up like a dollar a magazine. Uh, big, color, glossy, the old-fashioned Rolling Stone, you know, version. Uh, hundreds of thousands of those are going to go out. We're going to put about 80,000 on the streets of Central Texas from Austin down to San Antonio. And there are three bumper stickers, full-size, Infowars.com, Save the Constitution. So there's one that says Infowars.com, one that says Save the Constitution under Infowars.com, and a PrisonPlanet.com. And if you will, especially in San Antonio and Austin and other areas in the Hill Country, if you will go and get these, four or five of these off the stand before other people get them, and put them on your barn, on your book bag, on your car, give them to friends, we can put, just in Central Texas, 300 and something thousand bumper stickers out. And by the way, if this is successful, I'm going to start putting in, uh, 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 I may do three or four pages of bumper stickers in each magazine. We may try to put 10 million bumper stickers up around America and see how the New World Order likes that. <laughs> because just like the globalists, uh, when they were controlling the CIA and, and hadn't fully taken it over yet, were claiming they were overthrowing authoritarian countries for the betterment of the world. Really, they were doing it for standard fruit or uh, was it United Fruit or you know uh, all these other interests. We can overthrow the globalists in the mind by by calling them on their fraud, by calling them on their hoax, by calling them on how out of control and disconnected they are. And a big way to do it, just as the French resistance put up V, V for victory, uh, to counter the swastika, we are going to put Infowars.com bumper stickers up all over America, on your business, on your property, on your business sign. Wherever it is legal and lawful, or in commons areas where everybody puts up stickers and things and it's left alone in the bar district, you know, they'll freak out when we do it and say, how dare them put an InfoWars sticker up where thousands of other stickers are. The point is, get them, get them out to everybody, and if this is a success, it cost me about $40,000 to do this, I will just pump the money, because that's why they're so freaked out about us making money. I will pump the money into initiatives like this. I will pump it into more reporters, more journalists. I want to hire a bunch of classically trained journalists. We're doing interviews right now with newspaper editors and other people to come in and help us go over all our data, to help us codify, to help us hire more writers, more journalists. We're trying to go to the next level. With me as kind of the whirling dervish Tasmanian you know, patriot at the middle of it, but, but I'm trying to build a larger organization to really take on the New World Order and really find the truth. Because it is a very complex world. And I, in general terms, know the globalists are dis, distasteful, degenerate, eugenicist-based, predatory scum who try to sell the world on their altruism when it's actually the opposite. But we're going to drill down into all their operations. We're going to go after them on every front. That's what I'm really attempting to do. So buy the pro-pure water filters. I don't usually plug stuff this much because it's freaking the system out. I'll start plugging even more. You don't like me raising money? Well, you watch. In fact, if I get a million-dollar donation, I will spend every dime on it publicly 
to put bumpers to one million dollars would probably put I haven't done the math, it's like forty thousand dollars to get three hundred, four hundred thousand things like four hundred thousand stickers total and then uh, put them in the magazine. Uh, what would a million dollars? How many stickers would that be? Tens of millions? I mean, it's just crazy. Uh, you know, we've got the hundred thousand dollar, hundred fifty thousand dollar film contest. Uh, just to get a bunch of viral, awesome films made, and then have a winner, and then make films, and then we're going to put the films out for free on the Internet so they can be seen hundreds of millions of times. How do you like that? New World Order, White House run, Media Matters, all you other scum. How do you like that? We're not going to stop. And here's, here's what, here's what uh, the, the CIA-run National Review had to admit. They said if Jones has done anything, he has been the most successful person at creating grassroots aggressive journalists like We Are Change and like all the other groups. They, they accurately recognize that, that we have pioneered the idea of citizens, because I've been doing this for 18 years, going into press conferences and asking real questions and, sh and, and shutting their lies down. And they are scared of every one of their press conferences having citizen journalists. Even if you don't agree with me on a lot of stuff, you, you think you've got the answers? Go in there and shake it up. Don't be cookie cutter. Go into those press conferences and take them over. And I want the money to hire 15 reporters and fly them all over the country to take over press conferences. That's what I really want to do. But it takes money to do that. So, they're scared of us making money? Go to InfoWars.com and just click on the sponsors, support the sponsors, support our local AM and FM sponsors, buy the books, the videos, the t-shirts, the ball caps, all of it. Just go crazy and just fill our coffers full of money. And we will sit there and just pour that money out on top of the New World Order in the most vicious, truth-focused, savage attacks you can imagine. You better believe it. I'm going right for the juggler on these people. I'm foaming at the mouth and I'm not ashamed of it. I'm here to shake people out of their trance, out of their coma. They're now arresting kids that say F Obama. You got a right to say that. Bunch of authoritarian scum. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Jakari Jackson, tell us about this. So get the new magazine, the May magazine at cost, or get a subscription. Give a gift subscription. Every new subscriber and all the other subscribers will get this issue with the three bumper stickers in it. I know we've been showing TV viewers that. Everybody else can go to InfoWarsStore.com. Jakari, I'm going to go to calls. They're all holding patiently. But get into this high school student faces 20 years for Obama Facebook threat. Yes, and keep in, keep in mind, Alex, just as for the context of it, you remember last election cycle, where uh, many people were threatening Mitt Romney. You know, similar to this guy, I'm pretty sure most of the people were just blowing off some steam and whatnot. But yeah, but it, they were on Facebook and Twitter saying, oh, yeah. kill Mitt Romney. Oh, yeah, they said kill Mitt Romney. Now, I'm going to shoot him, and I'm not saying that media. Don't take it out of context. And White House run media matters, and people. Uh, like to do what that. I'm saying is, is they other people were saying it by the thousands, and it was no big deal. This guy just said F him. He didn't call for violence. Well, he did have a, a, a rap song, and most people don't take rap songs seriously. He had... Uh, Snoop Dogg recently had the uh, the nonviolent song that he made, but I just want to read this one article for, or this one quote from the police chief. He posted a thread in the form of rap where he mentioned the White House, the Boston Marathon bombing, and said, "Everybody, you will see what I'm going to do: kill people." And then he went on to say, "F politics, F Obama, and F the government." And if we can put his picture back on the screen, you can see him right there. If you're on PrisonPlanet.tv, that guy does not look like a terrorist mastermind to me. But if you've been watching the news, it looks lately, like an idiot. Yeah, they they've been saying all night. And sure, fully yeah, exactly, fully now. getting into it. And then a rap song where he says, "You're not going to believe what I'm going to do to the government." Well, that just uh, you don't get arrested for saying I'm going to do something to the government. You have to actually be planning to do something to the government. Yeah, and how this happened is, I guess one of his friends at school or you know, somebody at school saw his Facebook post and they took it into the principal, the administration, and the administration called the police. And I guess the guy was arrested and charged. Uh, charged and potentially faces 20 years for a Facebook threat. And many people write many... Yeah, but see, the way the Facebook media responded, right it was F. Obama. What he's really in trouble for is saying, kill people in a rap song. Oh, yeah. It's a rap song. I mean, how many people has Eminem, Dr. Dre, uh, 50 Cent? How many people... Eminem, Dr. Dre, they're always talking about killing people. And again, they put that on it. Well, it's like kids. They have all this violence in video games and culture, and then kids get in trouble because they're playing with water guns in their front yard now. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just totally disproportionate. You can't be this big violent empire and then not have people sit there and at least mimic it in their words. Yeah, just like when you did the report about the kids and the Pop-Tart guns and the Hello Kitty guns, and then we went to Toys R Us and all the other toy stores, and you just saw just aisles of water guns and dart guns and you know dress up like the military and, and shoot your shoot your sister and all that kind of stuff it's definitely something that's being advertised to kids even this guy probably listens to a lot of uh, gangster rap music 
and just decided to uh, imitate it. Well, that's another thing, is that you imitate what the mainstream media does, and then you get arrested. Mm -hmm. It's just amazing. Jakari Jackson, thanks. She'll be riding shotgun with us more. I'm going to come back and take phone calls. And then Schmecker's coming on, and I'll continue to take phone calls. I am wound up today, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back. Infowars.com. Get the magazine. All right, let's go to your phone calls. I had a Master Sergeant David Schmecker. Uh, who, of course, was arrested, and his video has been seen, I don't know how many tens of millions of times online, uh, out in the rural uh, central Texas on, on a marching with his son. No, 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 no. Uh, Master Sergeant David Schmecker was arrested outside Waco, CJ. He sure was. Absolutely. CJ just popped in and said Connecticut. And that's good, because I have the guys pop in occasionally. Uh, Oh, David Schmecker was another guy um, uh, who was in Connecticut. Yeah, see, because I kept telling you guys that I wanted uh, to get um, the master sergeant back on the radio show. Man, this has been one hell of a trip uh, being out of town. I will tell you that right now. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, go to phone calls here. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to Charles in Michigan. You're on the air, Charles. Hey, good day, Alex. Hey, buddy. Um, I wanted to I wanted to talk about um, trying maybe trying to expand Infowars a little bit. I got two issues. Uh, first issue, you should try to get David Knight and Zakari Jackson their own syndicated radio show maybe a little bit later on in the day across the nation, so they so more people can get the word of Infowars out. Say that again. I said uh, you should try to get uh, David Knight and Zakari Jackson because they're really good together. Uh, you should try to get them their own syndicated radio show associated with Infowars. You know, and like on, what on are local you radio stations? Yeah, I don't really understand what you're saying, man. Oh, no, uh, you know how you got your your, local, your, your radio shows on uh, you know local radio stations and everything. Well, they should uh, have a, I was saying you should try to get them to get their own show on local radio stations later on in the day. So, you know, when people are driving their car, they flip through, you know, on their way home at, you know, 6, 7 o'clock at night, they can hear Jakari Jackson and David Knight on. Yeah, it doesn't really work like that. Uh, you know, we're starting a news operation, and then we do plan to, to do radio down the road. But it's, it's, it's not as easy as you think to just start shows and then syndicate them. Second issue I want to talk about was uh, Michael Savage. Uh, I, I was kind of thrown back by you, uh, you kind of promoting him because uh, he never mentioned anything about Infowars, even the day of the show. Uh, I listened to him to see if he mentioned he was on your show. He never mentioned you once. Uh, his backstory is uh, is something else. I mean, he used to hang out with Allen Ginsberg back in the '60s, which was yeah. Well, communist. he says that stuff that's been said about him and that is not true and. And uh, Paul Watson does listen to the show and does say that he plugs InfoWars uh, and has and, and said that he said that we should ask questions about the drill at the bombing. Uh, but I don't listen to Savage a lot. I mean, I think compared to a lot of the other people on talk radio, he raises some important points. I don't agree with some of what he says. I just had him on the show because they were trying to basically black out his book about communist Chinese influence in our media, which we're seeing more and more with Iron Man and... Uh, World War Z and uh, the remake of um, the remake of uh, Red Dawn, they uh, they uh, cut that as well. Uh, so so that's just some of what's going on. I just you know uh, a lot of times you know like he was on another day or a couple weeks ago and he, he said he's seen a Muslim woman going into the store and he said uh, oh I looked into her eyes and I've seen the devil because Islam is the devil and. He's, he's really a hate monger, and uh, he wasn't as bad before he got fired, and then when he was picked up by Cumulus, it's like he sold his soul. And uh, he, he Yeah, I don't, uh, uh, Michael Savage was not fired. Michael Savage got out of his contract with Talk Radio Network. That's on record. Okay, but when he got picked up with Cumulus, his, his, everything changed, because he used to be a lot better. He, uh, he seemed to have went downhill, and I personally think he works for the globalists. Well, I tell you what. Next time we get him on, we'll open the phones up. How's that sound? You can you can tell him that. I mean, I got to be honest with you. I don't, I'm not really paying attention. I, I I mean, I read the news and stuff. I don't. I listen to him sometimes when I'm driving in the car in the afternoon. 
Uh, but, I mean, I just think we've got bigger fish to fry than talking about other talk show hosts. I mean, I try to not even talk about Glenn Beck bad when he's bashing me because it just doesn't even... It's just, it's just, it's just unending. We're going to take more calls uh, when we uh, come back. Again, I'm here on the road today, all over the map. Overall, an informative broadcast news blitz with Jakari Jackson coming up. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back live, and my philosophy is very, very simple. Whatever the globalists promote, whatever they push, with all their excuses and reasons, I oppose. I resist. If they're for open borders, I'm against it. If they're for taking my guns, I'm against it. If they're against the family, I'm against them. If they are against uh, national sovereignty, I stand against that. That's a good place to start. And then you can go through each one of those topics and issues and see how there's a global corporate government forming that is above the law and exempts itself from its own laws that it foist onto us. And that is not trying to build a better world altruistically, as they claim, but that is trying to secure their ill-gotten gains that predominantly come through fractional reserve banking. Fractional uh, reserve banking, where these select groups are allowed to basically create all the currency and credit they want and then loan it out to you on interest. Well, if you can loan out unlimited money at interest, what are you really looking for? More fiat money back? No, you're looking for people to get overextended, domesticated, in debt, and then collapse the society to consolidate it. Like the Willie Nelson song with the highwaymen. The bankman tells me he likes me, says he's my friend. But he ain't my friend. I forget the exact words of the song, but that's basically it. You know, Bankman says he likes me. No, that's not what's going on. Now, is that saying there might be a corner banker who's a nice guy and actually tries to take risk and loan people money? Yeah. But it's the little banks that aren't allowed to basically engage in all the same type of creative bookkeeping the big banks can do. And all those trillions in zero percent interest money that the Federal Reserve's created for its member banks, it's loaning you out that money at sometimes 30, 40, 50 percent interest. They've gotten rid of the usury laws in this country, or they've reversed them depending on the state, where now corporations have protection from usury, but individuals don't. And you go up to these poor people that don't know what they're doing, and you say, oh, I'll give you this loan, it's real good, and it turns out to be like 30% compounded interest, and you ruin that person's life and make them a debt slave, and then you call that free market. And then meanwhile, if you criticize those big banks, you are anti-establishment. You hate the government. You are an extremist. Our government, more and more, is a collection of private central banks that have come in and taken this country over, and they brag about it in the foreign press, how they've conquered Europe, how they've conquered America, how, how they're technocrats above the law, on and on and on. Brett in Montana, you're on the air. Welcome. Hey, thanks. Uh... Great show today. Thanks, buddy. And, uh, you know, it, it's really amazing to uh, watch all of this unfold since the Boston bombing. Because, you know, back in 9 11, I wasn't awake yet. And to watch you guys break everything down and just be on their heels, it's, it's something really uh, inspiring. Yeah, it is historic that, 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 that we were able to get on the bombing day one and that the, the drill came out of the bombs. And the, and the guys being cased by the FBI and CIA connections and, and Russia blowing their cover and killing the one brother and tape of them saying, don't shoot, don't shoot, uh, you know, all the rest of it. You know, we didn't do it, we didn't do it. The other brother climbing out of the boat, not shot in the throat, and then minutes later barely can't, you know, and, and, and you know, all bloody, can't talk, and then saying he confesses from his hospital bed. When in the American system or any other free system have you ever had the person in the hospital bed and they leak that he's confessed so that you prejudice everyone? I mean, I hope they don't you know, put me in the hospital, to... cut my larynx out, cut my vocal cords out, and say, Alex confesses. You know, oh, yeah, I mean, why not just torture people right there in the courtroom? They already drug people now in the courtroom to make them, quote, tell the truth. Why don't I have electroshock therapy right up on the stage? I mean, they already, guys, pull this up. Because I was telling the reporter this earlier, he, 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 did, he, he didn't believe me. And I don't blame him, it's so crazy. Pull up a court rules taser can be used 
to make you answer questions. I I'm sorry, caller, go ahead. Yeah, you know, I just want to say real quick, I was talking to my oldest son uh, last night, who's still down in uh, the L.A. area. Um, you know, he's 15, and uh, he thinks it's, it's uh, all rigged inside jobs, but they're not fooling anybody. And the word is getting out. And uh, so a couple of things that I wanted to cover was um, a local uh, story that happened here uh, in Columbia Falls. You cover the story, uh, I think it was the day of the bombing. So, uh, you know, I've been waiting for all of this to kind of go over so I could call about this. You know, that gentleman, uh, Mr. Downen, who was tasered and, and uh, killed, uh, there's a lot of things that they're really not talking about in that uh, news article that you got from the local paper here. Um, my, uh, my wife actually worked with Mr. Downen at the assisted living home before he was transferred to the, to the VA home. And uh, my my mother actually works at the VA home, and so I know for for a fact that the residents there are actually allowed to leave and go about their business, as long as they know that they're uh, going to make their way back. So, for them to report that he was running away, first of all, is a lie, and. Um, you know, you know, for those that don't know about the case, it's funny that I mentioned tasers. And that's what you called about. Um, that's the case where they squat on him for like 10 minutes and beat him to death, right? And break his neck? Uh, they tasered and the, him and, he, and made And then him, he was uh, the son. He was actually the son of a cop, too, right? Yeah, I, I'm not sure. I know he's a, a World War II uh, veteran, I, I believe. Um, but he was well, I mean, tasered. there's so many people they taser and kill. But, I mean, I saw the case in Southern California with the schizophrenic guy whose dad was the cop who they absolutely beat to death. And they sat there and, and, and squatted on him and killed him. And, uh, I mean, that's just, that's just what goes on. And, you know, my point on the tasers is this is all part of paying compliance. But go ahead and get to the point. I mean, what specifically are you saying about this case? Well, you know, I just would like to... to um get your opinion on, 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 on what to do to stand up to local tyranny because I, I've never done this before and, you know, I have serious issues with the local police uh, force and the way they're acting along with the uh, local... Uh, um, well, this is how uh, police act in a third world country and America is by and large now a third world country. And it's going to get worse, man. I mean, look, people want status. And the ultimate status in a tyranny is the uniform. This is this is the worship of the uniform. This is the North Koreatization uh, of our republic. And I would go to city council and talk about what you're seeing the police do. I would, I would go a hundred times. Uh, I would run for office and 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 bring it up in the debates. Uh, I would form a citizens group that films the police, uh, and you will you will end up reforming them in the in the long term. Uh, what has an effect is this just you know the Chinese water torture of just drip, 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 never stopping. I appreciate I appreciate your call, man. Good points. Um, let's go ahead and talk to uh, Rodney uh, in California. His kids have been taken away, he says. He's watching on PrisonPlanet.tv. Go ahead. You're on the air. Yeah, hi, Alex. Um, it, it's a little bit of confusion. Uh, this, this is Rodney, but uh, I was calling about the... Um about the kids that were taken away in California. I'm calling you from Paris, France. So it's interesting that you uh, that you were talking about France a little bit earlier on. And, and by the way... Yeah, that's funny. My uh, screen said, yeah, yeah, kids taken away. I guess you're speaking about kids being taken away in, in California, and you're, and you're calling from France. So go ahead. Exactly. And, uh, well, you know, I, I heard you speaking the other day uh, and just saying that you had that, you know, that feeling in your stomach, you know, when you saw... Uh, you know that video about the about those people getting their kids taken away. Exactly what you mean because I mean it was absolutely exactly the same thing for me when I watched that video feed. And I need to uh, you know, and, and this follows also the you know the things that happened in, in Florida as well with the you know with the the the, the, the parents that they found the, a little bit of marijuana on and they took their kids to. It's just it's, that's just incredible for me. And, you know, I, I left the U.S. 13 years ago. I go back, you know, several times a year, but 
But, uh, you know, I'll be honest with you, with all the stuff that I see, uh, you know, and, uh, on uh, YouTube and stuff for police brutality that I've been checking out since I've been awake, um, you know, it's it's actually very scary, and I need to I need to call you back, call you out on something um, because I, you know I'm I'm not advocating violence in any way, shape, or form. But honestly, Alex, I mean, from your heart, if if that was you, and you were at your house and some police and children's services came to your house and tried to take your kids away from you, what would you do? By the way, I haven't even played that video yet. I, I, I sent it to Chris on Monday, and I never got to it. Uh, guys, will you pull up that four-minute video? It was in uh, Adon Salazar's article, uh, and I've since turned on the television and saw it on national TV, where the couple didn't like the hospital care they were getting, and so they took their child to another hospital. So the cops came and attacked and knocked the dad down in his house and then say, you're going to give me that baby and then take it away, and it's just, it, they're just nuts. It's the family courts where there's no due process. Uh, they can do basically uh, whatever you, whatever, you, you know, they want to us. And, yeah, it did make me physically ill. And then you say, you're calling me out because I'm, I'm not calling for violence. But, I mean, you said, I'm, not, I'm calling you out, but I'm not calling you out because you're not calling for violence. But what would you do? Um, number one, I would know how to talk to the scum at the hospital uh, and say, look, I know you criminals kidnap kids all day, and you're on power trips, and you're little authoritarians, just like the Stanford uh, you know, uh, University study. You'd follow any order you were told. Uh, but, but you've engaged in malpractice here. You shouldn't have the child. Uh, and, 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 and I would first have my lawyer call them, knowing how criminal they are. Because if they hurt your kid, they'll try to blame you. If they kill your kid, they'll try to blame you. If they shoot him up and your kid dies in the hospital, they'll try to blame you. Um, this is what they do. Uh, not everyone's a criminal that works at the hospital, but there's a reason authoritarian regimes always use hospital people. They'll follow orders. They have a disdain for the patients uh, in, in many cases because they're sick of dealing with you all day, and they see humanity in, in bad shape. Uh, and uh, we're just a decadent satanic society. Uh, and, 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 yeah, the hospitals are there to kidnap your kids. They're, they're there to prey on you. And when you go in to have a baby, they, they ask your wife, you know, are you doing okay with money? Uh, is, is he nice to you? And they don't read you your rights there. They're about to take your kid, uh, especially if you're a good-looking, blonde-haired, blue-eyed woman. Or if you've got black hair and green eyes, your kids are gone no matter what happens. They've got like a half-million-dollar bounty on those kids. Uh, and they're there feeding on the kids, just like all authoritarian regimes have done. They want the children. And uh, now it's a national news story that, you know, they almost killed this, these people's kid. They had them on antibiotics when the child had the flu. There was one mistake after another. Um, who's the actor from Enemy Mind? Uh, he, he was in the right stuff. What's that actor's name? He's actually friends with one of my friends. Yeah, yeah, Dennis Quaid. They almost killed his kids. Huh? But see, if he wasn't a celebrity, they would have taken his kids. You understand? That's what they do. And uh, the most dangerous thing in America is a hospital. And, yeah, and I am. I mean, I, I am nasty about this. Things are out of balance with these people. So I don't know what I would do. You know, quite frankly, um... Uh, Quite frankly, it, it would depend on the situation, but obviously, it's 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 like it's like baiting someone or daring a five-year-old to go jump off a bridge to say, or you know, I dare you to do this, I dare you, I dare you to stick that in a light socket. You know, what are you going to do with the cops come and take your kids? I mean, I don't think anybody should say what they're planning to do if they were planning something. I always get these emails. Why don't you call for a revolution? And of course, you know, it's usually a provocateur or a Fed, but sometimes it's real people, and of course, they're the ones that want you to go out and cause some violence so they can like stir up a fight at a high school to like see two guys beat the hell out of each other. Uh, but I would probably uh, not resist it, uh, and then I would destroy everyone's lives, suing them over and over again, going after everyone, following people when they go to bars, showing them picking up hookers. I mean, I would ruin everyone's life involved. 
and they all know that. I would, I would, I would, I would absolutely destroy everyone politically. But see, I have a little bit of political power. But even before, back when I was just a little local talk show host, I learned how to go after bad guys. Um, so I would get my kids back. Uh, and uh, but but see, the state likes it to be out in the open. They're taking innocent families' kids and then keeping them no matter how much evidence there is because it just trains everybody to accept it. How many times have you seen parents that show their boys or girls hugging each other, you know, one's in a towel, the other's in the towel, and they just hug each other, and then they call it pedophilia and take their kids. But the U.N. can be running giant child kidnapping rings worldwide in the news, and no one gets in trouble. The truth is they're the perverts, they're the scum, they want your kids. They have an appetite for your kids. They'll be right next to a social worker that actually means well, that's such a bleeding heart airhead that, that they just go along with it. There's a reason CPS has a 50-plus percent turnover rate per year. Because all these people go get degrees, generally because they were abused, and they really want to go, quote, help people. Uh, and then they find out, oh, my God, this is really a pervert guild. This is really a pedophile guild. This is really, or, or a mercenary guild. A lot of it's just buying and selling the kids. Or they can get 200, 300, 400, 500,000 per child through the adoption rackets. See, because of abortion, there are more people willing to adopt each year than there are kids they can even get. And so that's why people get kids from South Korea, kids from China, kids from, you know, Africa, kids from Latin America. But in a lot of those cases, the kids are kidnapped too. But let me tell you, these rich families, they will pay $200,000, $300,000, $400,000. They'll want to see photos. The cops, a lot of times, will actually take photos of the parents that are provided to the adoption agencies. I mean, if you've got a bombshell-looking wife, I don't care if you've got, I don't care if you're young professionals. If you're a good-looking couple, you look like Clark Kent. Because I've talked to people involved. I mean, black hair, blue-green eyes, it's over. That's the rarest. You walk into one of those hospitals, they are hunting your butt. I remember my dad saying, because he worked in rewiring jaws and stuff in major Dallas hospitals when I was going to get, when I was like 15, get my driver's license, going to take the driver's course. But he goes, do not sign the organ donor card. And I said, why? And he goes, well, some hospitals won't give you care if you've signed it. They'll let you die. And I said, well, t I, and I didn't believe him. And he said, I, I've, I've been told it goes on in Dallas. 60 minutes years later, I didn't believe him. But, but I still didn't sign it. 60 minutes reported that... Dallas and Chicago were the two things they covered. You can look this up. We're killing people for their organs. <laughs> I love it. The government loves you. You know, I've got this uh, reporter here, and I was saying search engine, tasering people to make them ask questions, and he goes, well, I found the case in Niagara. The judge said police can taser you to make you, you know, open your mouth, give them a DNA sample. And then I found one out of Florida where they tasered a guy on a gurney to make him pee in a cup. And he goes, well, those are just small towns. Yeah, this is Orlando, Florida, where this happened. No, it's federally trained pain compliance. I've had former police chief, Sean, I've talked about it. The feds, this is going all over the world. It's global standardization. Our training that if someone doesn't answer their questions, taser you. If someone doesn't follow every order, well, what about the Fifth Amendment? I mean, what about... What about the, I saw people commenting on the YouTube video from the show last week where I talked about how we got the business um, census that was going to be every 10 years, now it's going to be every year. They're talking about some businesses every month, and people are like, I didn't get this census, it isn't real. Well, you don't run a business, dummy. It's like how people will do backflips mental gymnastics to not look at what's going on and to always say that's an isolated incident. That's an I No, it's not an isolated incident. We had police in Austin a couple months ago say we couldn't hand out our magazine. And, and, and then they said, by the way, you can't have InfoWars on your car parked at a parking meter. We say that's a violation of the advertising uh, zoning ordinance. And then, I, and, and then I got on the phone with him because I wasn't down there. And I said, are you joking? And he goes, look, I'm a listener. I don't like doing this. I've been ordered to do this by the city. I said, you get your boss down there. So then the deputy head of zoning enforcement comes down. And I said, fine, I'm going to sue you all. I'm coming. And then they backed off. But the point is, I can't have a bumper sticker until I threaten to sue you lunatics? The cop should have said, no way I'm going to write them tickets for bumper stickers on their freaking car. Excuse me.
Excuse me, man, I'm sick of this. And I'm sick of sitting here trying to get this country out of a coma. And it really made me even sicker when I got down there and the cops were all, hey, man, we'll take photos with you. We're all listeners. We're all nice guys. We didn't like doing it. But I, exactly. Why did you follow the order? Why did you write the tickets to our street team? Why? 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 Why do all these good people go along with this? I'm sick of it. It's like Arde Saveda, the police chief's in my office a few weeks ago. He's on air. And I'm sitting there talking to him, and I go, look, I know you guys can dial in in the Threat Fusion Center thing and find my cell phone wherever I'm at without a warrant. And him and, and the deputy cop, you know, his assistant he brought with him, smiled through the window. And Arde Saveda goes, well, so what? What do you have to hide? What do I have to hide, buddy? Why do you have walls up around your house? It's not because you have something to hide, but you know what? You might want to go get on the toilet in privacy. You might want to argue with your wife in privacy. You might want some privacy, buddy. It's my privacy, and I'm not guilty because I want it. You freak. Government is making everything more and more secretive, arming to the teeth, giant underground bunkers full of food. And we go, hey, we better get prepared. Something's going, oh, that's crazy. And then the government lies and says they don't have COG plans for the public. The government lies and says, oh, we're not planning anything. There's nothing going on here, which makes it even more creepy. I was talking to this Esquire guy, and he goes, well, of course, we're a big country. They've got to do that. And, yeah, they've got to have basic plans of a tidal wave hit the West Coast or a meteor hit something. But, but they're not even doing that. They have zombie drills all over the country where they practice with heavy machine guns mowing down masses of Americans. And they used to do it without calling them zombies, but the Marines are like, we're trained to kill Americans. So they went, oh, it's a zombie drill. It's a zombie drill to dehumanize us. It's like the Nazis said, we're not killing Jews, we're killing rats. And what did the LA Times depict me as? A rat. I'm a rat saying the government might have been involved in the bombing. No, they just have a long history of it, but I'm not supposed to question it. More of your phone calls coming up, ladies and gentlemen. Stay with us. All right, we're going to end the insanity here. I'm going to take 50 phone calls in the next hour. 50 phone calls. Toll-free number to join us. 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231. I'm kind of doing the voice of Jack Van Impey's announcer. Jack Van Impey and Rex Sella Van Impey. Revelation. It's always a fun show to watch just to imitate that guy's voice. He's awesome. What's, who's the announcer's name on uh, the Van Impey show? Let's go ahead and talk to Lauren in Texas. You're on the air, Lauren. Come on down. Hey, Alex. How about, how about this? I'm listening to the radio show. It's awesome. You're on fire today. How about all the info warriors right now, like around the walls of Jericho, we give the loudest battle cry that the pinko commies have ever heard. Yeah! Ah, yeah! <laughs> I'm gonna yell that loud. I don't have much voice left, but you're right. Yeah! 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 Right. But that that do. <laughs> yeah! The anticipation's been killing me. Shake it I'm off, man. Shake right off the mind control. It all begins all with running right, around actually, with your tongue hanging out. <laughs> hey, actually, the last time I called was when Lou Rockwell was on, and uh, I was laid up on the couch with pain pills. I was out of my mind, and I was telling him, I'm ready to tear my house down because of the way they're treating Ron Paul. And I wanted to, you know, I never did get to my point. I wanted to call him out and ask him why he never did clear the air about the so-called, quote-unquote, racist newsletters. But, you know, that's for another day. I actually wrote my points down, and I want to go down it. This is the call for the course of action. I think maybe you needed to hear from me. My car didn't start today. I got to, you know, change the starter out after we're done. But, you know, I'm glad I'm here at home, and I can have a battle cry with my brother in arms. First, are you still there? Yes, I am. I'm going to move quick through calls. I love your call. Go ahead. I just want to get to everybody else. There we go. I'm going to go down the list. First off, this is a common alliance. This isn't a leader follower. You're not my leader. You didn't make me the way I am. I am the way I am, and I saw a brother in arms who saw the world as it is. We're not really, you know, addressing problems to identify the, the, the enemy. We know the enemy. It's a potato. Every time I read the news, I'm saying, oh, well, a potato's got eyes. A potato's a root family. It grows in the dirt. You know, it's brown. It tastes good when you put some salt and pepper and butter on it. It's a potato. So we know it's a potato. So 
So what are we going to do with the potato? All right, first off, Info Warrior Street Team. I think it would be a good idea to maybe have a press pack with like five or ten T-shirts, hats, bumper stickers, all the kind of good stuff that you want to go do person to person, camp out in front of Walmart, camp out in front of the mall, hand out the information. Let's get 100,000 street teams all across the country handing out T-shirts, bumper stickers, brochures, flyers, shaking hands, meeting babies, whatever. All right, second off, uh, I think something that we maybe might work I don't really know of any law that prevents somebody from burning their Social Security card. So how about we get, uh, you know, a million people, three million people uh, in front of the Federal Reserve and we all burn our Social Security card and we secede from, you know, the IRS tax. That's right. Exactly. This is one argument that no establishment can have, even if they claim they're altruistic. The private Federal Reserve and the 17th Amendment turning our senators into federal minions, the income tax created the same year, paid to the private Federal Reserve is a foreign alien uh, fourth branch of government, and we've even got Greenspan on PBS saying they're above the law, and that and that no agency, no agency of government can investigate them, and it's just horse manure. I want the Federal Reserve out of my life now. God bless you, and I appreciate your call. We're going to come back in the next long segment and go to a bunch of your calls. But look at this headline on a New York Daily News. It's up on Infowars.com. Times Square camera suing city over $60,000 fine for gun lighters. U.S. camera and computers says the city's Department of Consumer Affairs was arbitrary and capricious when it fined the shop in 2011 for carrying a small weapon-like lighters. Folks, they want your guns. They, they, they've banned BB guns in many cities, and they've banned things that look like guns. That's thought crime. They're arresting kids and Monday through Friday, we're here 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. back weeknight, 7 o'clock in Forward's Nightly News, back Sundays 4 to 6 p.m. with the Sunday transmission. Well, the uh, Palm Beach Post is reporting the sheriff wants people to call us if the guy down the street hates the government and talks bad about the government. We're going to go knock on their door because there's such an epidemic of people attacking the government. No, it's the government nine times out of ten attacking us and saying we need to turn our guns in. And in New York now, if you have a toy lighter, they fine you $60,000 if it looks like a gun. So the image of the gun, there's no lobby for the image of the gun, so they ban that. And Obama is the lobby for immigration reform, i.e. North American Union open borders and the voting block that will be put on welfare and then vote to take our guns, like they've done in Mexico to have the highest crime rate in the world. Uh, 60,000 dead in the last six years. Uh, a president to pitch immigration overhaul in Mexico. Isn't that just uh, cute? And I've got several articles here I'm going to get to after I take a bunch of calls where you've got so-called leftists, and they're not leftists. Thomas Jefferson was a liberal. Um, these people are authoritarians posing as liberals, just like a lot of neocons pose as conservatives or constitutionalists and are really flaming authoritarians. All over the country, I've got a CNN article uh, and I've got a, uh, another one here. It's actually on my phone. I didn't punch it up on the computer yet. Where the police say, they've, the people have confessed, to staging uh, attacks on themselves. Women saying Republicans threatened to rape them. And then it turns out the posts were posted by them. You know, the lesbian that said that she was attacked and the men came in and raped her and scraped stuff on her. You had the, a bunch of women caught scraping... Um, uh, the word Obama on their faces and stuff, and then blaming it on Obama. Uh, you've had the people do it to themselves and then blame it on Obama supporters, uh, and, and 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 then also do it and and say that you know you know vice versa. You've had Obama people say they were attacked by racists because of Obama, and it was staged. The public engages in false flags constantly, constantly. It's going on and on and on. Yeah, here it is. Uh, I'm going to go over a few of these uh, articles here uh, after after we go to go to some of your phone calls. But absolute creepville taking place all over the United States as the public just has no connection to the Bill of Rights of the Constitution, and so why not just be completely overrun? Here's another one: suicide rate skyrockets among middle-aged Americans. And that is a article out of Breitbart. 
and they ask, why is it skyrocketing so much? And again, I'll get to that after we take calls. Well, I mean, gee, why are the troops committing suicide in mass? I see these articles going, top psychiatrists don't know why. They have no idea from the Pentagon. Gee, the Pentagon's not going to tell on itself making people serve five, six, seven, eight tours. That Sergeant Bales that went and reportedly uh, killed 18 people in some type of delusional rage, he was under psychiatric care, reportedly on psychotropic drugs, but they won't say which ones. He would had part of his foot blown off. He was being sent back for a fourth tour. He'd been arrested by police for going bonkers on his wife, uh, reportedly, and, and out in the woods. That all got expunged. And then they sent him back, and then he watched an IED blow up an armored vehicle and kill his buddy and watched his buddy bleed out. And then the next night, he climbs over the wall and goes and slowly kills and burns 18 people, including children, at multiple houses in a sleepwalking rage. <sighs> yeah, you put somebody, I mean, folks, they put prosthesis on these guys now and go get back out there. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you wonder why they're committing suicide. Last numbers I saw seven times any previous record from the end of the Vietnam War in 74. Now you wonder why Americans are? Because this is a screwed up society, that's why filled with preservatives and GMO and a toxic culture of death. And I'm just railing and flailing around. I want out of it, too. I I I'll tell you the story, and then I'll go to your calls, I promise. I said I'd take a lot of calls, which I never can do, so. Because I'm out of control. I just do what I do. I went to the Mid-America Science Museum that has the biggest Tesla coil uh, reportedly in the world. That's what they say, and it's the biggest one I've ever seen. And I've, I've seen a couple of them. And... Uh, I'm going to upload that video to YouTube, but my my, camp, my phone's not been logging into YouTube since I dropped it in the sink the other day, so we're going to try to get these videos up. Or when I get back tomorrow, we'll do it. But the point is, uh, is that they had this thing called uh, our underground Arkansas. Underground Arkansas. And I thought you'd go in there to be like crystals and little gnomes or something, you know, Alice in Wonderland or... It would show what like underground Arkansas is like as a miner. No, it's like a it's like a CIA torture box. They you know put people in, they torture. You know they lock them up in a tube or a box. That's what it was. And my kids go in there, and nobody there wasn't a sign saying don't put adults in this. So I and I'm not claustrophobic. I mean I've gone spelunking and you know things. I I don't particularly and I've done some cave diving, open cave diving. You know gone back in like 50 feet and still conk my head and stuff. And I you know just don't particularly like it, but. The point is, is that I go into this thing, and I go all the way back into there, and it's one tube, barely, because I'm a big guy, weigh 250 pounds, I got broad shoulders, uh, and uh, good size, you know, belly when I'm at least sitting down, and I'm going through, and I'm like, man, okay, this has got to be the one tube, so there's another tube, and 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 my kids are laughing and having fun, because they're little, they can go through it, and... Then you go through like these nightmare things with like the, the uh, these ropes you're in, and, and, and when I got out of it, I was sweating and stuff, and I'd eat a big barbecue meal here. One of the best barbecues I ever had. I think it's called McLaird's, McLaird's or something. Bill Clinton's favorite barbecue place. I later learned it is world famous, but on the cover of Playboy magazine, because they had that hanging out. The place was like criminally good. Thank God I don't live in Hot Springs, Arkansas, folks, because I thought the best barbecue I had was in Memphis, and I love Texas barbecue. Don't get me wrong, but this was sinfully delicious. And, and it's a real dive, too. It's made it even better. And uh, so I've got that in my stomach, and I come out sweating, and I, I had this realization. I said, this is what I feel like with the New World Order. It's like claustrophobia light. I mean, I was drawn to media and TV and radio because I didn't like them trying to demonize private property rights, demonize the family, demonize men, demonize the Second Amendment, because it upset me at a fundamental, free-spirited, rebellious, whatever you want to call it, level. And, and I realized the feeling I get right now is like being in those tubes. So people don't know what powers the show. That's what's powering it. That's why I'm angry. Because I, by the tenth tube, I was ready to get out of there. Imagine a big mess in almost total darkness. In fact, it was total darkness until you come out in these areas with a little bit of black light. I mean, can you imagine the people they lock up, like the North Vietnamese would do to our soldiers, in like cages for years, smaller than their bodies, and they would get off on it? All those, you know, uh, Asian forms of torture. 
and then all the medieval European tortures, and then the tortures they do. And it's because they like it, folks. You know who the CIA hired to run those torture camps? People, jail guards from around the world who'd been kicked out for raping people and torturing people. The truth is they torture because they like to do it. And they like to get fake confessions, and they like the power of it. Look at our culture. It's obsessed with torture and stuff and darkness. And um, it, it just absolutely makes me want to throw up. And I'm telling you, being under the New World Order is like watching our whole society in tubes that get smaller and smaller. And, 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 and there's all this propaganda of why it's good and why we're lucky and how it's a great thing and how we should appreciate it. No! No, I know it's bad. History shows it's bad. And our founders said the stuff that's going on is bad, bad, bad. And, and, and any amount of perfume can be put on this, but it's still, it's still, this whole new world order is a dead, rotting pig in a box. I'm telling you, that's what it is. And I just, I had this epiphany for the last couple of tubes, and I kind of relaxed, and I was like, this is, this, this is what I feel like talking about the new world order. This feeling. It's disgusting. All right, I said I'd go to your phone calls. I'm trying to punch up the phone system. We're going we're gonna to skip this network break. I'm going to skip this break. As I said, I'd take nothing but calls, and I've got I've to follow that promise by skipping breaks if I have to. It's like Salon says, all I want is money. Actually, it's kind of true. I do want money to destroy the New World Order. Let's go ahead and talk to Joe in Illinois. You're on the air. Go ahead. Hi, Alex. Uh, happy Police Adoration Day from Springfield, Illinois. Uh, the cops are honoring themselves today with formations and parades. And I just want to say that um, I totally respect the dead, but I respect all dead. You know, coal miners, in my opinion, are heroic people. And Oh, my God. I really respect coal miners now. <laughs> it's funny you mention that, yeah. After, after, That's a dangerous you know, profession, after, after yeah. They're, after they're told that, that you're going to die if you go down there to save your buddy, they go anyway. So, and, and here's what, I want to compliment you. I know you hate compliments, but the two things that, that keep me listening and keep me interested, but uh, aside from the information, which the seeking of truth is this, two things. Your work ethic is second to none, okay? I was listening to you when you, you used to go eight hours a day on air. The second thing is you never use profanity, on air and that is very commendable it's worth complimenting i hope people appreciate how hard it is to sit and rant and rant and rant and never get and say hades instead of hell okay i mean well i know we have children listening but exactly but sometimes stuff is so bad you know you've got to like you know when the police are saying burn that effort down and then said they didn't mean that with Dorner, you have to quote them without, you know, you have to say the effing because it's the police that set it on the scanner. But, yes, I do try to keep the show as clean as possible. That's, that's just, a, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a statement to your, you know, what I would call your intelligent pursuit of, of, this, of a scholarly type, you know, environment. You know, ignorance, people who have no other, you know, words to use is cuss and swear like joe rogan i mean i'm not putting him down and and especially the guy that criticized uh Dondi. you know that guy couldn't make a he, he talked about how high his iq was and he couldn't even complete a sentence without yeah, that video that video that's up on infowars.com right now i think the headlines msnbc uh gas discredits themselves it should be, uh, you know, globalist minion destroyed by history. I mean, now, history is kryptonite to that guy. And, and you notice in the interview he did with Dude, and he's like the darling of MSNBC and stuff like that's going to hurt us. Like, go out and confront him for war. Shut them up. The guy is sitting there going, and Alex says there was nobody killed at Sandy Hook. And nobody killed the Boston bombing. You're a liar. And Rob Dude goes, we didn't say that. We said there was a drill. And we said that, that, that they'd probably have connections to the FBI and CIA, which they did. And... Now they're having him confess with no proof while he's sedated in a, in a, in a, in a hospital bed. You, you're not supposed to do that. That clearly, because that means they could set people up, and the government has a history of framing and setting people up. Shut up, you effing info wars, you scum. I got a high IQ, and the government ain't doing nothing wrong. And, and by the way, folks, I love Northern Voices. I'm not, I'm not making fun of I'm not making fun of Yankees. I like to do redneck voices, too. It's, in fact, I think I've been reincarnated from um, Elmer Fudd. And I would actually like to speak like that all the time. Uh, Joe, I appreciate your call. It's good to hear from you, Jazz. Uh, 
Let's go to Rod in Oregon calling about the Dumb and Dumb of America, which is uh, the conspiracy theory. Go ahead, uh, Rod. Hey, Alex. God bless you, brother. And uh, I pray all every day for you, your family, all your staff and their families and everybody that's dealing with this, uh, exposing the crap that's going on. Excuse the language. But anyway, I had a comment to make, and I had a question to ask you, too. But because of your show that's been going on, there's a couple other things that came to my attention. I wanted to make a comment. Why is it that all everybody can keep referring a, this government or this corporate fascist regime, as I call it, as a government? For one thing, it always surprises me, and that. And uh, number two, um, um, also, uh, I wanted to uh, talk about the dumbing down of America. I know in the in the couple of your shows, you were, you know, uh, I guess it was sarcastically or whatever, saying, you know, um, uh, you know, USA, USA. And it's like no matter how stupid people are, even with these petitions that have been, these mock petitions that have been going out, it's incredible. Uh, banning pressure cookers now, uh, trying to turn a police uh, state into more of a police state, and people just mindlessly, and you can just see their body brainlessly just sign this stuff. It's absolutely amazing. But anyway, getting to my point, I most of your listeners, I'm sure, remember Flip Wilson. And uh, uh, remembering Flip Wilson, you you know you have to appreciate the way he told stories. But there was one skit that he did that I remember. You may have heard it. Maybe some of your listeners may have heard it. But it was called uh, "Do Ruby Magonia Ring a Bell?" Well, anyway, in the middle of this skit, there was a part where Flip Wilson was talking about the story in this, and you have to just picture how Flip Wilson did this. And at this time, it was funny, but today it's so right on and of reality, it's unbelievable. But he talks about this uh, king called King Begonia, who ruled the kingdom of Begonia, and he says, like he says, that's why they call it King. Be kingdom of Begonia because that was his name. So King Begonia would come out on his perch and all the townspeople would be gathering around to listen to his big speech and he'd be, and all the people are out there going, yay King Begonia! Yay King Begonia! And King Begonia would come out with his speech and he would say, all those that have anything it shall be taken away from them. And everybody's still cheering for King Begonia. King Begonia. And then he says, and all those that have nothing shall have even less. And the people are just still cheering, yay, King Begonia. I won't finish the whole story because it gets into it, but this was just a, a bit in the middle of this skit. And when you look at it today, that's exactly, it seems like, what's going on. No matter no, no, what I, happened. In fact, we were, we're going to send our reporters out. I think Mark Dice has already done that. We were planning it weeks ago, Great Minds Think Alike, to go out and say, let's ban pressure cookers now. In fact, I want that ask. We're going to be man on the street today in Austin. Uh, we're going to go up and say, w w we want you know, women's right to uh, afterbirth abortion uh, to uh, you know, be the law. Uh, and, and, then, and, then, and then have a printout of the Journal of uh, Bioethics uh, having an article about killing children up to age three. And, and, and maybe print out the cover of the case for killing granny on Newsweek. And then say, hi, we're here for, you know, you know, we're here for the death panels. Uh, I'd like to sign a petition that uh, you know, Austin, Texas uh, euthanized the old people. Uh, and, and then, and, but but you've got to say it's liberal, and then go, uh, uh, and as long as you go, uh, uh, that's the key, as we've shown in these. If you don't do the, uh, 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 you've got to do that to activate their mind control, to show. That's why NPR talks like that. It's it's all Delphi technique. It's very loving. Everything. I mean, I mean, they could have tanks just going loving, loving, and people would walk and lay their children down in front of it for the treads to run over them. They would just dance around the blood as long as the loudspeakers went liberal, liberal. Do you understand that? They would just worship Obama. Just all Americans should bow to Obama a hundred times a day and just have thousands of drones just bombing other countries with huge video screens of, of the video of the bombs coming in and splattering everybody and just mountains of dead and dead people and just worshiping. That with just huge loudspeakers going, ah, oh, liberal, ah, oh, it's liberal. How's that sound? Uh, sounds great. Hey, one other thing, Alex. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, go ahead. Hey, I, I, one that's not as good as Flip mentioned... Wilson's King Begonia. <laughs> Well, hey, uh, uh, one other thing you mentioned earlier uh, about, you know, getting involved with the political arena and going to these meetings and doing all this kind of stuff and, and everything and getting involved with this so we can, you know, uh, uh, take uh, charge of some of these things. Well, anyway, I know a group of us here in Oregon, and this has been an ongoing issue right now for probably several uh, years. Uh, 
Yeah, I'm sorry, I was being liberal. <laughs> That's all right. And the information <laughs> that we have gathered right now, we have we have a sheriff's department and eight county commissioners on the chopping block for racketeering and official misconduct with the evidence. We went to a meeting last night, and there was a fireworks going, but we have this on tape, video, and everything of the crimes that these people have committed, including the sheriff's department. For yeah, put it on YouTube. Just, just like keep going after him, brother. Put it on YouTube, and we'll cover it. God bless you. Good to hear from you. Uh, let's go to another one there. I was being illustrating absurdity about being absurd there earlier. I think they should give the bombs what they dropped on Libya and now that they're giving to al-Qaeda to attack Syria with. They, sh they should give the bombs peace prizes. And they should give the UN forces that are involved in mass murder all over the world. They should give them peace prizes. They should give their bayonets peace prizes. Uh, they should put, like, bayonet cams on them when they stab villagers because, you know, that's cheaper than just blowing them up or shooting them like they uh, helped uh, the globalists to engage in, in Rwanda. Th then they could give the, the, uh, the, the machetes peace prizes. Uh, let's go ahead now and go to the next caller here. I'm trying to punch up my call list. For some reason, it's not there. Uh, who's up next here? Steve in Chicago. You're on the air, Steve. Yes, sir. I I want to say, hey, Rothschild, I'm not your Kapora, I'm not your Chalmer, I'm not your Nebish or Slamil. Do you read me? I want to also talk about a double agent. Benedict <laughs> I got to stop you, man. You've been calling for like a 10 years. You have got the best voice. I want to get your phone number, even even though you always call in with the same racist stuff. Uh, uh, and not off what you just said with the Yiddish stuff, but like, you know, the, the anti-black stuff. You could have a career as a voice announcer with that voice. Sir, can you just say the woods are lovely, dark and deep, but I have miles to go before I sleep? Uh, maybe next time. I wanted to talk about Senator John McCain. He's a three-star <laughs> officer in the Latvian Army. He's the only officer, to, uh, naval aviator, to successfully kamikaze his own uh, aircraft carrier. Also, what did he do with the Keating bribe money? But I want to say one thing. You have an uncanny sense of being right. When you talk about these false flags, whether it's the St. Petersburg 1917 a Bolshevik Revolution where they burned down the federal criminal archives and confiscated the guns, or it's the Bavarian Soviet Republic on April 14, 1919, when they occupied Munich and the state commandant or the city commandant he said, turn in all your weapons in four, uh, 12 hours or you'll be executed. And one other thing, the Justice Ministry. When, when the Bolsheviks, uh, when they occupied the, Bols uh, the uh, Vienna uh, Justice Ministry in 1927, the first thing they did, turn in your firearms. The other issues, you know, you were talking about the Cheka courtroom where they put you in a small confined area and slowly you know, put corks in the wall so that you uh, gradually suffocate. That's one of their tortures. But you mentioned this before about these women in the CIA. They call it Dora the Glove Maker. You read up on it. See if I'm not right. And All right, I want to come back to you. You've got to, you, but you've got to say McGruff helped take a bite out of crime. Say it. Come on. I, uh, don't, don't hang up, Steve, in Chicago. I'm coming back to you. We're, on We're back live. Your host, Alex Jones, here. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the media is now running around like chickens with their heads cut off, declaring the evil of Alex Jones, uh, trying to twist or take things out of context, uh, or taking some of my satire out of context, which is fine. Let them demonize, let them say what they want, let them write what they want. We are awakening humanity to the fact that there is a lot of stuff going on. I am your root awakening. I am trying to be the wake-up call. What you wake up and see is your own issue. It doesn't mean you have to agree with me on everything because I don't even agree with myself on everything. Sometimes I hear a rebroadcast and don't agree with what I said, the way it came off. It doesn't matter. At least I'm real. And it will be reality, not illusion and delusion, that will turn this country and this civilization around and point it back in the right direction towards the stars. Now, I'm very excited about Operation Greedy Goblin. I'm being sarcastic. That's not the name of the operation. But if I think if Salon was claiming I had operations, they would they write about me every day now, demonizing me. I guess they like the attention when I talk about them. Uh, that would be Operation Greedy Goblin. Uh, no, no. Um, we, we have Operation Awaken the Sleeping Giant that is 11 memberships with one membership. You sign up and you can give a username passcode 
uh, that you create to 11 people to be simultaneously logged on to see the video of the daily radio show that adds a lot of other video and information and clips and documents and articles and guests and the nightly news. And you then also help fund our operation. Though I've kind of got InfoWars Nightly News uh, set up where um, I've got InfoWars Nightly News set up. It's weird when you're trying to center yourself looking at an iPhone. It's like backwards. It's like trying to read something, uh, you know, when it's in a mirror. Yes, inch to my right, my right. Am I right now? I'm right? Yeah, I think I'm good. You know, the more I think about it, I haven't even been looking at the camera I'm on today, and I just kind of looked up and saw I was crooked on screen. What was I just now getting at? What was I talking about before that happened? Oh, yeah, PrisonPlanet.tv. Get a PrisonPlanet.tv membership today. Wake some people up. I mean, I would say most of your friends and family aren't going to end up using it. So I would go create a unique username passcode at prisonplanet.tv, or if you already have one and want to change it, that's fine. Don't, don't share your passcode if it's to other stuff. Create a unique username passcode. And I would say send it out to 30 friends and family as an e-card. You know, say, hey, here's your subscription gift to prisonplanet.tv. I'm allowed to share my subscription. Here's your gift. Go see Endgame. Go see the Obama deception. Go see this special report with Dr. Busby uh, about the dangers of Fukushima radiation. Uh, go see this report with his top scientist on the Harvard studies of sodium fluoride lowering IQ and reducing fertility, and then we show the documents where it was all planned. There is 11 years now, or really more than that, because I put a lot of the stuff on before I had PrisonPlanet.tv, but 11 plus years of material on PrisonPlanet.tv, and now it's uh, up there the last few year, years in HD. You have the live streams and all the rest of it, but they're not in HD, obviously, because you wouldn't be able to, on most computers, get an HD stream. Uh, but uh, it's all there, so get a PrisonPlanet.tv membership today, and also get the new May issue uh, that deals with the uh, big questions of the Boston bombing. Uh, and the history of false flags, very important issue, and will probably sell out the fastest of any issue we've had. Most issues have sold out at cost with three InfoWars full-size bumper stickers inside. And if you are in Central Texas, there are 60,000 in Austin and 20,000 in San Antonio, and then a few thousand others in some other Hill Country areas. You can go to restaurants or wherever, and when you see a stack of these, take four or five copies and give them to friends and family, but make sure they all get put up. Make sure, but do not put them on anybody's private property. Put them on your private property or in commons areas where it is common practice for people to put up bumper stickers. And you know there's restaurants where they want you to put your bumper sticker up. There's, 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 there's like the sides of bars where there's thousands of bumper stickers. You know, stuff like that. But, but only put it in legal and lawful areas. Uh, and then again, if you want to order, say, 10 magazines at cost, then get them for like 14 bucks. I think that's what 10 of the magazines cost, isn't it? Because you know, that includes the shipping and everything. Okay, then then you can then you can have thirty bumper stickers. And these are high quality. These are like you know the type that last years. So, ladies and gentlemen, now is the time. Infowarstore.com. Enough of that. Uh, let's uh, go ahead and uh, continue to stir up the hornet's nest, folks. They're not going to like these bumper stickers going up everywhere. The average bumper sticker is seen thousands of times in a year. So this is going to be tens of millions more people that see InfoWars.com and ask, what is that? Uh, Steve in Chicago, look, your voice is so interesting. Can you just say McGruff, help take a bite out of crime? Can you say that for McGruff, me, Steve? McGruff, help take a, a bite out of crime. Just like <laughs> Alex. I learned it from Oh, my you. gosh. I mean, you, 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 you absolutely. J-O-N-E-S. Robert E. Lee, Alex E. Jones, long live the Confederacy. Long live the Confederacy. One other thing, and I'll leave you. This Chris Crispy character, Alex and I are not going to jail. You're going to jail, you 300-pound canary. What did you do with Hoffa's body? That's what we want to know. I'll he ate him. You know why Chris Christie's so fat and loves Obama? Do you know why, Steve? No. Because he ate him. <laughs> well, they are cannibals. I can see Media Matters now. Jones believes that the governor of New Jersey ate Jimmy Hoffa. <laughs>
He actually went to a health spa and took him as an enema. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm completely out of control now. That's not a, that's not a family thing to say. I apologize. <laughs> He's got the rotting body of Jimmy Hoffa inside of him. All right, that's enough. Man, you cannot call in, Steve. Why don't you repent for, for – oh, he just hung up. Steve hadn't gotten in in a couple of years. I, he's, that guy's been calling me for like 17 years since I first got syndicated. Uh, and uh, about 16 and a half. And uh, that guy is hilarious. Did you hear him? <laughs> you 300-pound canary. I think he weighs more than 300 pounds, man. Let's not be mean to fat people. I can go swim two miles, lift weights, run, do whatever I want. And uh, I, guess I, I guess I have lost some weight. Uh, anyways, I'm like a body like Ben Grimm. Travis in Nebraska, you're on the air. I apologize for the comedy that was just happening, but uh, who knows? I mean, it's as plausible as Obama's birth certificate being real. Anyways, go ahead, Travis. You're on the air. Let me start by saying I appreciate what you're doing. I got a few sir. quick points I want to say, and then I'll get to what I, what I initially called in for. Uh, I'm from Nebraska, and uh, the the woman, the lesbian that supposedly got held down by the two men and and cut up, and they tried to kill her and burn her house down, yeah, that happened here in Lincoln, Nebraska. I called red flag on that and became a serious striking post for all my friends because I'm supposedly a bigot. Second thing, you talk about martial law and police state. My sister, last weekend in Kansas, refused to uh, refused to do a breathalyzer because she wasn't drunk. They gave her a DUI, put her in jail anyways. And they said, yeah, you, you get a DUI. No, 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 that's what the courts do now is, is they just say you're drunk with no proof. It's like, well, you don't do the breathalyzer and you're sticking up for your Fourth Amendment. And, and I've seen yeah. reports where people are like coming out of church and they'll go, you know, we're going to do a breathalyzer. No, I hadn't been drinking. No, you can't search my car. There was an article up yesterday on InfoWars where it's a warrantless checkpoint, and they just arrest people if they don't let you search the car. I mean, of course, I have that in my film, uh, Road to Tyranny, where she pulls up, Navy veteran, no criminal record, in town buying canning supplies, and they want to search her car, and she goes, no, you can't. They're searching the cars. They're not like they're, and they weren't looking for a bank robber. This is in Virginia. They were just doing checkpoints in a rural area, state police. And they get into her trunk while she's in handcuffs now in the back of the car, and they go, oh, oh, oh. it's all on video on Rose here, and they go, look. And it was Patriot Games. They were scared of a VHS tape of uh, Harrison Ford. The word Patriot scared them, because finally they'd found one of the terrorists. You know, they talk about Patriots, they're terrorists. And then, they, then it got bad. They found a pocket constitution in my film, Police State, and the police go, I don't know if this is legal. And they start going, God. Yeah. Folks, I'm not joking. The, the, the head state police guy goes, I don't know if this is legal. Is that the right she's talking about? Does it mean she's allowed to have it? I don't know if this contraband is legal. Uh, uh, is, that is just extremist stuff. I mean, it was like Porky Pig with a lobotomy, and they take her to jail, and she. And the, the trial was on TV, and the trial. It, it was like uh, that that listener in, in Lyon County, Kentucky, Kelly Rushing. He calls in and goes, "I got arrested for handing out your films." I gave a state police officer them, and then uh, he pulled me over the next day and laughed to his wife on the cell phone, I've got the VHS bandit. And they charged him three counts. It was a Ron Paul speech called Neocond on slow play VHS tape, my film Road to Tyranny, and one other film. And they said, this is anti-police, and we find it threatening. And they took him to trial. Kelly Rushing was in the local paper. And I didn't believe him at first. I was still naive, you know, like 11 years ago. This is right when the film came out. It was about 10 years ago. And so I called the paper, and they go, yes, Mr. Rushing is being charged. Uh, and, and I was like, okay. And then I called the judge at home. He's like, yes, Mr. Jones, uh, I don't, can't talk about the trial, but yes, we're going to be having the trial next week. You'll have to follow it there. And, and I was like, what? So I called and got a hold of Kelly Rushing. I, I kept his number. You got to report on this for Esquire. And uh, they went to trial and tried to put him in jail. I think it was seven years. It was five years in jail for each count. They have memory serves. It was going to be consecutive, 15 years in prison. And uh, the cop got up, and, and, and Rushing got up in his own defense and said, I, 
I gave him the video, uh, and I said, and then when he pulled me over a couple of days later, the next day, whatever it was, he said, that was anti-law enforcement. Oh, and one of the charges was also, the guy said, why did you give me that? And he said, well, I, I care about you and your family. And then that was a charge mentioning his family. <laughs> mentioning his family was another threat. And it turned out Kelly Rushing was like a prominent family, all, you know, pillars in the in the community, a bunch of, you know, nice people. But in America, they have a hunger to literally put us in jail. So, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Travis, in Nebraska. Yeah, I have the articles uh, that you mention here. Uh, CNN's reporting on it. And, and so are others. There's an epidemic, an epidemic uh, across the country of, of, of so-called leftists, the really authoritarians, trying to act out and be a celebrity in, in, in Sovietization. And so, you know, they, they put swastikas on their dorm, uh, or they, you know, they burn a cross in their yard, or they claim the right-wingers raped them, and then they have candlelight vigils, and if anybody questions it, they're evil, and then about 98% of the time it turns out to be fake. But then there's epidemics all over the country of black folks who have been so filled full of racism by MSNBC that whites are inherently racist and evil, that, that groups of black people, like what the Klan used to do to blacks, are now beating up uh, whites who are so domesticated on record, including newspaper people, they roll over and flop around on the ground. So I guess they deserve it, Noy. I mean, that's just, and, and, and this is happening all over the country, and the media has articles about struggling with reporting it because it, it, it's just, maybe we deserve it. Maybe whites should all walk out in public and slit their throats, find a black person, grab a big double edged knife, and just go, I, I am evil. And just splurry blood all over me, go, and just bleed out. And and then Chris Matthews will dance in the blood, and it'll be a big celebration. I, I mean, you know, th I mean, that probably wouldn't be because whites are being murdered, tortured, killed, attacked all over the country. And, and, and there's never going to be a candlelight vigil. The news won't even say that it's blacks doing it. And again, I love black people, but, but, there, are, but there are racist black people filled full of this whole thing. And that's all the media trying to create division in this country. The media wants to create division and wants to keep and, and keep people fighting with each other in this nation. So what do you think? I think they should erect giant wood chippers in every town center with a with a, w w a run by the city and police, so it's all safe and for the children. And that and that people that want to prove that they're bad, um, evil whites that want to prove that they're bad, that they just walk up the stairs, they turn it on, and and everybody claps, and you throw yourself into a high powered wood chipper. How does that sound? amazing but the reason that i did call <laughs> it's like have, having scales taken off of your eyes uh in july 2nd of this past summer uh, i was playing flag football scraped my elbow i i, I uh I developed a uh an abscess in my armpit because you're a racist yeah because <laughs> i'm racist no and long story short um I went septic, septic shock, everything. I, they, they couldn't tell me what was wrong with me in the hospital. I, it was a miracle, like a 1% chance of me surviving it. I had five surgeries and th five or six surgeries, three days ICU for a week in the hospital for about a month. Uh, it's, a, it's a parasite um, that they couldn't identify that it came out of Southeast Asia. I mean, I bet I had, I don't even know how many CDC guys coming in and saying, what were you doing? What did you eat for the past See, you're being, uh, hold on, hold on, you're being racist again. Yeah, no, uh, uh, here's the deal. The third world takes antibiotics like it's candy. It's sold in all the shops. All this antibiotic cream, ointments, uh, the soaps here are making the bugs absolutely high-powered. Within three generations with most insects, they become resistant or immune. Within ten generations, almost all of them become completely immune to poison. What do you think happens with bacteria whose life cycle is a lot quicker than even insects? Arachnids, bugs, you name it, whatever the type of insect is. And you're absolutely right. There is just hordes of disease pouring in. to, to, to and, and I feel sorry for the third world. I mean, I, I wish we could help them. But the point is, instead, America and the globalists and their lust to collapse things quicker and to get a voting block that has no history of freedom, there are just parasites and brain parasites and, and, and weird mosquitoes. And I mean, look at fire ants. They came from Brazil, where now under globalism, I mean, it's kind of like Westerners coming here who were immune to smallpox or resistant because all their ancestors had already died from it. So they have the genetics to be resistant. And it wiped out most of the natives. That wiped out... 
some estimates are 90% of the natives, so they didn't have to be, even be killed. Uh, and, and again, that was wrong. But the point is, is that what were you getting at with this loving parasite? What type of loving parasite was it, you racist? I survived. Um, it, I went from 185 to 148 in three weeks. Uh, it was a miracle. The, the doctors, it was a whole thing. What is the loving parasite racist? Okay. Anyway, since I've walked out of that hospital, I have been called by different government agencies. Uh, they've identified themselves as a, a, a bureau of something, uh, my taxes. They've asked, doesn't matter what, it, I bet it, I've had 10 or 11 phone calls and they say the same thing every single time. Where are you living? What are you doing? Where are you working? Are you married? Has your family gotten sick? We'll be in contact with you in the next two weeks. And I mean, I'm getting calls from all over Minnesota. Ohio, what is Minnesota, the parasite? Florida. What is the oh, parasite? Penicillium arfrilii, and it's an unidentified form of Penicillium arfrilii that they think came from Southeast Asia. From a, foot, a scrape on your elbow from flag football. Sir, prove that you're not racist. Worship <laughs> the government today. Yeah. I hear you. No, I'm, folks, I'm being sarcastic. No one go throw themselves on wood chipper to prove that you... Uh, Love the government. You know, ladies and gentlemen, I get a little bit cynical sometimes and dark on air because this stuff gets to me. I have extreme empathy. Not because I'm some goody two-shoes person. I just have basic instincts. When I see all this death, all this destruction, all this corruption going on, and the government, they tell us when we're supposed to care. And I, and I know I've been obsessing on that lately. But I don't just turn it on and off. Like, don't you care about the Boston bombing and those that died? Yes, I do care. And I want to get to the bottom of who killed them or who let terrorists kill them. And I don't want their deaths to be used as sacrifices to convert America to a police state for the security of the state. There's always that excuse. And every time it leads to hell on earth. That's what I'm getting at here. So Travis in Nebraska finishing up, uh, say, say the name of that parasite again so we can pull it up on screen for TV viewers. What are they saying it is, Travis? They sent my blood to six or seven different places and they all came back. We can't identify this. The best they could do is say it's a strand of, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, penicillium umphilii, I believe. And they said it, the closest relative it has is out of Southeast Asia. So it was like a well, one... Well, penicillium, uh, well, it could have come in on dust and stuff against the atmosphere. Uh, it could have come in from outer space. But, I mean, penicillium, isn't that in a fungus family? Yeah, it's a fungus, a mold, yeah. Or a mold yep. family, yeah. Yep. All yep. right, very then, interesting. Travis, just go to... with it. You should have given your body over to the fungus and have been one with it, like in Creep Show. I'm glad to hear you're better, man. God bless you. Man, I tell you, I ran into so many people in Hot Springs, Arkansas, where I'm at right now. We extended our stay because one of our kids got a cold. Been a lot of people sick this year. Uh, and so we were like doing the show from here, and we're, we're, we're now coming back tomorrow. Uh, but um, I'm coming to you from a very historic place. The hotel was nice and uh, let us have this through the broadcast, and I'm going to plug the hotel tomorrow right before I leave. We've already had, let me not exaggerate, about 15 different groups of people show up figuring out where I'm at. And you feel really bad, you know, hanging out with them, taking photos and stuff when you got to go somewhere. And you know, they're inviting you to dinner and stuff. But just, I tell you, Arkansas is just the nicest people. I mean, I've been all over the country, and I've been coming here since I was a kid, but Arkansas, that's why we st stayed more days. We're just having a great time. And uh, I'll be back live on the radio tomorrow, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Nightly news is coming up uh, this evening. I, I may compose myself more and do a video Skype into the show tonight because i got a bunch of news I want to cover. Uh, but um, we're going to go into about five minutes of overdrive, too, to make sure that I can get to these calls that have been holding. Tom in North Carolina, you want to talk about the Colorado theater shooter. Never mind the man behind the curtain. Uh, what's your take on that, sir? Yes, sir. Alex, it's a pleasure to talk to you. Okay. Am I understanding you right with the with the home story? Was he forced to take truth serum? Yeah, you can pull up the articles. They've been drugging him the whole time, and just, I mean, to even get into it. There's just hundreds of points, uh, and and then now they're talking about drugging him with truth serum to make him tell the truth. Well, the sodium pentothal and the other stuff, the halcyon, other stuff they're putting him on, is what you do to make people just say whatever you want. You could put somebody on these drugs and say, say that you're you know, I love Lucy, or say that you're a Easter bunny, and people will say they are. It's not really truth serum. 
It just why? makes you be so out of your head that you'll just babble. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I don't know why I can't believe it. I mean, I really should with everything they've done. I mean, look, look, look what they're doing in the first, the, the second, the fourth, the sixth amendment. Why, why not go after the fifth a little more? No, I, I know it says, uh, you know, that no one should be compelled to be a witness against himself. How is that not a violation? I just, I just don't understand. We really need to come together and have the mentality, like the gun owners of America, you know, just a no compromise attitude toward our liberties. It just irritates me so listen, much. Listen, listen. There was a, a doctor, dentist up in, I think it was Kansas City, named Dr. Sell. I'll talk about it when we come back. Uh, Infowars.com. Yeah, type in Sell versus the United States. Dr. Charles T. Sell. I had his lawyers and people on. They kept him in jail for years after years. Uh, he was in charge with, I think it was Medicaid or Medicare fraud. And, no, no, not charged. Arrested. And then they said, you're mentally ill for I issuing a not guilty plea. We're going to put you in a prison and drug you with antipsychotics. This guy with no criminal record. <laughs> and, and they just rotted him. And uh, I, I just remember all these victims. Now, in this case, in a landmark decision, the United States Supreme Court imposed stringent limits on the right of a lower court to order the forcible administrative or antipsychotic medication to a criminal defendant. So the Supreme Court did the right thing in that, at least partially, who had been determined to be incompetent to stand trial for the sole purpose of making them competent and be able to, to uh, be tried. Well, they just found them incompetent because he said it was a conspiracy, and the government can't do a conspiracy against you. That's mentally ill. Uh, specifically, uh, the court held that lower courts could do so only under limited circumstances. See, it was one of those things where it was both ways. And a specified criteria had been met. And I, I, and I, I forget even the, what happened in the case. But I think they just ignored the ruling last time. I wonder what ever happened to him. Subsequent dev developments. In 2004, Sell was found competent to stand trial, and the trial was scheduled. A week before the trial began, the prosecution and defense claimed that he was mentally unfit for trial. And they'd kept him in jail for, like, some huge amount of time drug. On April 18th of 2005, Sell pleaded no contest to federal charges of fraud and conspiracy to kill a federal agent. Yeah, that was it. He was at a shooting range, and, and, and they had an undercover there, and he talked crap about him. And they showed, they showed him... After serving eight years without trial in federal prison, <laughs> it's like that guy in New Mexico had been in jail for like three years, being pulled over for a parking ticket or something. There wasn't even a record of him. He was like had long hair and fingernails and was like, ee, and they just shoved food under it. I think they should have just shoved them all in a wood chipper. I say blow the whole planet up to worship government. Government's in charge. Detonate the antimatter weapons. We worship you. <laughs> just, you know, government is God. How's that sound? That sound good? Just worship government. Worship, worship, worship. All right, I apologize, folks. I'm a little out of control today. Uh, Dave in Texas, you're on the air, sir. Thanks for holding. How you doing, Alex? Good to talk to you. Yes, sir. Yeah, I wanted to bring to your attention an event that happened to me this earlier today. I uh, went to pick up my four-year-old grandson at pre-K at, a, unfortunately, a government school. A four-year-old thought written, criminal? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And he had been written up. I got a note from his teacher. He had been written up for making a little gun sign with his hand at another student. He made a gun sign with his hand. They show it all over TV and everywhere. And the cop, but, but the kids, all kids, you know, play with toy guns. He made the sign of his hand. He's four. What do we need to do? A lobotomy? What, what? His line disconnected. His cell phone dropped. I, I want to hear this story. Yeah, they're teaching everybody to be mental, mentally ill basket cases where your pastry looks like a gun. You're kicked out of school. You brought a plastic knife to, you know, zero tolerance. Zero tolerance is a prison. The schools are prisons. And speaking of New Mexico and other states, now have the big private security firms that own the prisons. They're now g g doing security at the schools and admittedly prepping everyone for prison. And a lot of these states pass laws agreeing to keep the prisons at 90% occupancy to get new prisons built in the state because that's the jobs in our state is the prison. Only jobs around here at Walmart and at the prison. But see, make them criminals work in an unair conditioned prison. But then they work for 25 cents an hour taking your jobs. The good old boys go, oh.
Is that why I don't have a job? Yes. What's the What's the uh, Kurt Vonnegut book where half the people are in prison and the other half are jail guards? That's pretty much where this is going. How about we do something else? Great job to the crew. Read transmission starts now.